Did you forget your password? You did, I know it. I will now take a voice vote for those who have not used their e-device. And anyone that's virtual, I will come back for you. Alderman, Alderwoman Dow. Alderwoman Dow is present. Alderman Robinson. Not present. Alderman Hall. Alderman Hall is present. Alderman Beal. Alderman Beal is present. Alderwoman Ramirez. Not present. Alderman David Moore. Alderman Moore? Alderman Moore is present. Alderman Mosley. Alderman Mosley is present. Alderwoman Cruz. Cruz not present. Alderman Conway. Conway not present. Alderman Viegas. Viegas is present. Alderman Gardner. Gardner is present. Alderwoman Silverstein. Silverstein is present. I'll go to those on vert. Oh. Alderman Cruz is attendance. Anyone else that I missed? Silverstein is present. And Cruz is present. Okay, all those that have voted who wished, the voting is now closed. The mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you. There are 44 member, 45 members here present, so we do have a quorum. Um, there are a few alders that wish to participate remotely per Rule 40, 59, apologies, um, that is permitted. So the following alders are Robinson, Julia Ramirez, Alderwoman Taylor, Alder Byron Sigcho Lopez, have requested to participate in today's meeting remotely for reasons stated in Rule 59. Can I get a motion to approve their remote participation and have them have this been moved? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Any opposed, say nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Madam Clerk, please add all those respective alders um, with the ability to participate remotely. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation which will be delivered today by Pastor uh, Christian Kuhn from the Urban Village Church. Let us pray. Oh God, we read in the book of Exodus that you came to Moses in a flame of fire out of a bush. You encouraged him to take off his shoes for he was on holy ground. Moses was a man in exile on the fringes in the wilderness and yet all that was around him you declared to be holy ground. Today some go to the mountains or the oceans in the belief that only these grand vistas can we experience holy ground, but you are more than the mountains, more than the oceans. In fact, there is holy ground all around us in all kinds of unexpected places, including in our great city of Chicago. From Austin to Lake Michigan, from Rogers Park to Altgeld Gardens, we experience your sacred presence everywhere. Thank you for that presence. Help us to stop and rejoice in the diversity and richness of this city so that we might even take off our shoes and recognize the holy ground beneath the skyscrapers and in the cracked sidewalks. You have given us freedom and responsibility to care for this holy ground. I pray that your spirit would be here today in these chambers. May it come upon these leaders who have the awesome task of representing the millions of people who call this holy ground their home. Those residents who are descended from native tribes who have been here for eons, and our migrant neighbors who have been here only a few weeks. Wherever they stand, sit, and lie down, you are there in those sacred spaces. May the decisions made here today honor each and every one of our citizens, especially the most vulnerable, so that when you appear to them, like you appeared to Moses, they may know your goodness and the love of their neighbors and the embrace of our city. Come, O Spirit, into this space, bring peace, kindness, and listening ears, to this holy ground today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What? 
Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Dow. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move to suspend to briefly go out of the regular order of business to consider one item on my list of committee reports, and there's two on Alderman Irvin. Hearing Chairman no Irvin. objection, so order. Mr. President, Chairman Irvin and I requested defer and publish SO2024-000738 governing the issuance of general obligation and or securitization corporation bonds for economic development or affordable housing pro programs. Thank you very much. This item will be deferred. The chair recognizes chair Chairman Irvin. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Alderman Vasquez and I wish to defer the item number one and item number two of the budget committee report. Item number one is the annual appropriation ordinance year 2024 amendment within fund 925, ordinance 2024-0008345. And item number two, which is an ordinance amending the 2024 annual appropriation ordinance, which was a direct introduction from the director of the Office of Budget and Management. Thank you very much. Those items will be uh, deferred. We will now return back to the regular order of business. Public comment. The Council will now begin the public comment period, which is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Any speaker, speakers cannot yield or transfer their time to another speaker. Our first speaker today is Patricia Tatum. Good afternoon. My name is Patricia Tatum. I'm a resident of the 20th Ward. And I'm here to support the South Shore CBA ordinance, which includes housing protection for South Shore and the vacant lot on 63rd and Blackstone that's to be used for affordable housing. In 2020, the Woodlawn Housing Preservation Ordinance was passed. Some provisions that have been really helpful and useful in the community are the, like the homeowner repair grants. Many of the long-term residents in Woodlawn are on fixed incomes They've lived here a long time, but were unable to do the repairs needed for their homes. And I'm sure that at this, it's the same problems that many people in South Shore are having right now, too. Um, they need this money to get the repairs done so that they're not cited by the city or in fear of losing their home. We need these grants, and we need transparency around where the grant money is going. Ever since the Senate Obama Center was announced in 2015, I've been receiving regular calls, emails, text messages from investors who want to buy my property, which I've been in for over 40 years now. I've lived and worked in this community for over 50 years as a nurse. There should be some more support systems in place for long-term homeowners and tenants. It is not right that we are second priority to investors and pe people looking to just make money and not be a part of this community. There are a lot of folks who've been displaced from Woodlawn whose rents have gone up because of investors who jack up the prices and put, make people uh, unable to afford to live in the community anymore. This has also led to a lot of people doubling up in someone else's home or moving to other places, such as South Shore. This has been a traumatic experience for this community. A lot of times we have two to three generations living in one home, and displacement and gentrification means the new units that are being built have only been built suitable for occupancy by one to two people. We need to stop this cycle of instability and displacement by passing the South Shore CBA ordinance. In the closing, I want to point out that in the last election, there was a referendum in two precincts of the 7th Ward 
where over 77% of the residents voted yes for South Shore CBA. What I'm telling you today is felt by many people in South Shore, so I urge you to support the South Shore CBA ordinance. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Michael Young Bay. This $70 million, $70 million, and not counting the past, past millions of dollars that this city done approved of, or this state and the county, et cetera. $70 million. Y'all won't even put a million dollars in one neighborhood. A million dollars in one neighborhood. Brandon Mayor Johnson, you say that you for the children, et cetera, you for the youth. You know, you want to have work programs for the youth, et cetera. Where a million dollars for these work programs for these children? You see, I'm not going to address nobody in the room no more. I'm going to just address you whenever this is city council. Because I gave you a hard draft of, of what me and my family has experienced far as the discrimination against these, against me and my child and my wife. You know, that comes from places like the Safer Foundation. That come from all Chicago. That come from bring Chicago home. You see, that come for these ministers that y'all have. You know, if you go look on bring Chicago home site, you see all them reverends and things like that. They got all these nice churches in these neighborhoods. Nice mega churches. And our people homes. And I, want, I don't even want to say our people home, because some people, we got to be honest, they do let their stuff go. They do live up in trash, et cetera. But, and willingly of their own will. But what about the face? Like, what about 79th Street? You see what I'm saying? What about the face? What about 71st Street? What about all these different streets with these abandoned buildings, with these empty lots? And then the churches come up and try to buy these lots. That's why I say to the people, come up out of her. Come up out of Rome. That's why I say that. Come up out of there. The snake is no good. It don't matter who they put at the head. He ain't running nothing. We got to be honest about this situation. But I'm still going to talk to you. I'm still going to call you out. I'm still going to say the names. And then I'm coming down here fighting about me and my family housing and being discriminated and retaliated against and I get attacked by Greg Mitchell. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, and I, and I still been trying to come here and be humble and things like that and things and give honors and respect and things like that, but y'all ain't trying to hear that. So now I'm going to go press these charges and I'm going to do this lawsuit. Okay. I'm not going to play with y'all. I told y'all and I got proof. I got evidence. I got the video of me having you the hard drive, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So I'm Michael Youngbay to the media. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Kirby Kalin. Hello, and thank you for taking my public comment. My name is Kirby Callen, and I am an organizer in the 32nd Ward, where I focus on expanding public access to mental health care, housing, and public safety. I'd like to start my comment by addressing the Godzilla in the room, and by that, I, of course, mean affordable housing. Uh, the Finance Committee endorsed the proposal for $1.25 billion for affordable housing over the next five years. So much of life as a Chicagoan these days is defined by the transient nature of constantly moving every year or two because you can no longer live in the community you want to place roots. And so we need to build affordable housing. Let's borrow money, let's cut some tape and build more affordable housing units across this city with speed and safety. I also want to address the uh, substitute order to change the future of ShotSpotter to a ward by ward basis. We cannot do this. We need to cancel the shot spotter contract and discontinue its use, discontinue its use citywide. 
An aldermanic discretion of shot spotter would lead to a patchwork across the city of profiling, oppression, and aggression. If we are truly to believe that policing can fight crime, we don't need to be expending their resources on something that leads to 85% of the time to incidents where there is no evidence of a gun crime, 90% of the time with no evidence of a crime at all. Shot spotter wastes our resources and puts those that are most vulnerable at risk of being profiled and damaged by our police. And I also want to spend time speaking on the migrant funding. This is a crisis across our city, but it is not because of the immigrants, it is because of our lack of allocation of resources. This migrant crisis is a resource crisis and we need vast resources to protect our new community members. 70 million, 70 million, <laughs> Hey, you can, you can fight it as much as you want, but it's true. These are our neighbors. These are now a part of our communities. Immigrants are a basis for our future as a city. Ever since the beginning to now, immigrants are the lifeblood of this city, and we need to support them, not just in the 70 millimeter, but to address the future of this city. We need investments in affordable housing, public access to mental health care, so that these people are protected and ensured that they can live in Chicago in a community that is vibrant, depending not only on them, but the connections within the community. 70 millimeter, is, excuse me, 70 million dollars is a great way to start, but it's not enough. It's possible for us to not spend enough on migrant funding. It is not possible for us to spend too, excuse me, it's not possible for us to spend too much. We're spending too little. Let's expand the money for migrants. They need our support. They're not going anywhere. We are a welcoming city. We're going to stay that way. So let's make sure they are protected. Thank you. That's my public comments. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Richard Poiso. Before our next speaker, Before our next speaker, just a second, sir. Before our next speaker, I would respectfully ask yet again that those that are participating in democracy allow our speakers to finish their presentation. If you cannot adhere to that expectation, I'm going to ask that our sergeant at arms remove you. Give our speakers the respect that they deserve. Their three minutes. You may commence, sir. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody here. My name is Richard. Last name is Paso. I'm a store manager at an automotive facility here in Chicago. I'm a native to Chicago. It's near and dear to my heart. The city doesn't feel the same anymore. There's a lot of stuff going on right now that's really hard to process. There's a lot of people here that have watched me on social media. I'm a social media influencer, and I've heard the word getting back to me. Some of the people that work for you have gotten stuff back to me. I'm going to say what I have to say regardless. You can come after me if you want. You can try to slander me if you want. Some of the aldermen can talk behind my back if you want. But there's 31 out of 50 aldermen, December 14th, that turned their back on the public that said, I will not take their vote on this city continuing to be a sanctuary city. You turned it to yourself to speak for us. You turned it to yourself to speak for the public. We pay you. You work for us. We put you there. How can you stand there and say anything about, we don't want to take their vote? We're going to speak on their behalf, and this is how it's going to be. It shouldn't work that way. Any politician that feels like they deserve that type of control over people, they don't deserve to be politicians. They don't deserve to be in the spot that they're in. Second of all, I'm a veteran. I served 15 months in a war zone for this country where I got hurt. Yes, I, the VA does take care of me. But every year I'm hearing, let's take away, let's take away, let's take away, let's give back, let's take away, let's give back. But we have immigrants that serve with us, that put their life on the line, that are still fighting for citizenship, that are in the military, that deserve all the respect in the world, and they don't get it. They come back, they're still fighting for citizenship. Some of them don't get it, they get deported. These are people that put their life on the line for this country, for all of you to have the freedom and the jobs that you have, and they don't get the respect to have somebody care for them and help them through the process. But all of you guys out here will vote for people that are complete aliens to this country, that have nothing. Trend de Agua, Venezuela, 
Any, anything coming from the Dominican, not, not Dominican, Honduras, all these people are coming here. They've cleared out these prisons years ago. And they're sending all these people here. They don't want them there. They don't serve them a purpose. They're showing up here in New York, in Chicago, attacking people in the streets. The police are fighting with them in the, in the shelters that you guys are funding. You guys think it's a great idea, but yet your police officers are getting attacked. Your public's getting attacked. You're putting our lives at risk by doing what you're doing, and none of you care about it because the mighty dollar sits on top. And as long as somebody's in your pocket that you're working with, you're okay with doing it. You don't care about the citizens. At some point in time, there's going to be an answering for this. What it is, I don't know. But it doesn't look good. And I don't respect most of the people that are in here because you turned your back on the citizens and you said, your voice doesn't matter. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Tuan Sims. The homeless, uh, what is it, the HMIS, the homeless, homeless Management Information Systems. So my number would have been 355061. That would have been issued July 15th, 2021. We finance that endeavor, right? The HMIS that's financed and budgeted, right? Because this is what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about finance and budget. However, I'm an individual in the room. One individual. Y'all mismanaging this failing actually because once again July 15th 2021 it's July what is it now what anybody April 17th I didn't sleep last night worrying about this I didn't sleep last night imagine how do you talk to these people to have them understand that hey this is difficult to deal with especially when you are 43 year old resident of the city of Chicago versus being somebody who just got here who being treated just like you should be treated Right? I'm just saying. So yesterday was my son's birthday. If I had housing, we could have spent it pleasantly. I didn't speak to him. I didn't speak to him. His name, Ian Walter by Sims. I actually have an order of protection. His mom got it. My son is a star pupil and a star athlete in Everston High School. However, his father support him to the utmost, and yet I'm, I'm attacked over this. I'm attacked maybe because of my views. And the fact that, to point out that our government, our city government, now that I understand, has the, basically turned their back on black Chicagoans. Y'all yeah. are implementing our demise here in the city through financing and budgeting. I sit in the room and actually get the understanding now. And it's disgusting. The hardship that I'm suffering and been suffering, it seems like it's not only unintentional, it seems like it's manufactured. Like, I've been pursued for the last four years simply for my views or simply for pointing out the fact that I'm not getting nowhere. We talk about, let's, let's repair it. But you finna put 70, more, 70 million into a, this mission. 600 million in Illinois alone. 275 million more. This year counted 150 million. My HMIS number is 355061. How did y'all drop the ball for so many years on one individual? Wow. But y'all coming to budget and finance, y'all coming to budget and finance the demise of black Chicagoans here. That's what y'all budgeting and financing. Y'all whittling us out and y'all doing it in such a gracious fashion. Y'all representing us as y'all do it. This what y'all doing. Thank you very much for your comments. Our next speaker is Prey Eastleigh. Good afternoon to the afternoon. city of Chicago. I am P. Ray of the 37th Ward. Chicago Red is our organization. Because we started this session with a prayer, I want to start my comment with a scripture. First Timothy 5 and 8 says, But if any 
provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So I want to talk to y'all today about not going to hell. In the 37th Ward, there was a family, the Jones family. Amari A. Jones was standing in her family building that they've owned for 40 years, doing a TikTok dance with her mother. A bullet came through the window, hit her in the neck. She fell to the ground in front of her mother and bled to death. A month ago on the Chicago mugshot page, her mother was on that page. Her mother had on her daughter's rest in peace t-shirt. She washed it so many times that it was completely faded out. She was completely hot out of her mind and the charge was possession. Now, the first $51 million that this council gave to the migrants came from the opioid settlement funds. I am here on behalf of the Jones family, on behalf of the 37th Ward, on behalf of Black Chicago, on behalf of the entire city, to ask you all to vote no and put that money back in the opioid settlement fund. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. That woman should not be at Cook County Jail because she's grieving over a random act of violence that caused her to lose her child in front of her face when the city of Chicago has millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to give to people who ain't paid a dime into the tax base. We've been in my building for 52 years. We're about to pay some old taxes. The Jones family has been in their building for 45 years paying taxes every year on time. So I'm asking y'all to use our tax money for our people. We need it. We got people leaning. We got people rocking. We got overdosing. We got uh, pass out lines. You live on the west side, uh, Mayor Johnson. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We need the money for us. We need opioid treatment on the west side of Chicago. We are the headquarters of the cartel and everybody in here knows it. They selling more drugs than the law can allow and y'all giving money back to them because they traffic those people up here. So we paying them going and coming. Coming. Absolutely not. We pay too much. It costs too much money to live in this city. Help Wanda Jones. Help every other grieving mother who feels like she has to go get high to get over the loss of her child. This is a woman who lived in that house. She still sleeps in that living room where her daughter passed out and bled to death. So I'm asking y'all to say no, put these people on the back burner, and put the money back in the opioid fund. We need that money. Thank y'all. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Easley. The next speaker is Mr. Denzel Dillard. The next speaker is Mr. Denzel Dillard. Yes, how you doing there, uh, Mayor? Um, Good afternoon. I come here for a different perspective. I come here to give you praise. I hope to soften the blow here. Um, I think I've been sent here, you know, after being evicted, um, after all the turmoil that I'm going through, I'm here to say thank you. I think you're doing a great job, you know, despite the disparities that's going on within our communities. You know, shucks, I don't care what mayor was here, it wouldn't be done. But more importantly, I'm here too. Um, to let you know that I'm a, a struggling young man. Um, I've, I've always, at your tenure, wanted to work for your administration. You know, my goal is to get hired. I believe in your, your mission. I believe in, in, in the hope of the city. Um, and then I see where your administration is going. I want to be a part of the process. Even if I do not work for your administration, or well, hope to um, be hired for some job um, for the city. And one of the reasons that I thank the Lord that I'm here, because a lot of people don't think that I'll be hired. They think that I won't be helped by you. They think that um, things can't happen, you know, to good people. I believe in you. I believe. And my goal is hopefully to work for your administration or for the city and hopefully to even soften the blow because I, I see so much here. I almost want to pray for this environment because I do not let anyone steer me wrong just like you do. You know, no matter what the bickering and the hollering, because 
I adore and I appreciate this whole administration, this whole body here, even the people, even that's behind me. I, okay, kiss it. And, and just like this, I want to be um, an asset to, your, to the city and to your administration or to some part um, working inside the administration. I just want to thank you. And I just want to say this very briefly. Lord, I want to thank you for this moment that you gave us. Lord, I want you to, to, to continue to bless our city. Lord, bless the people that surround us, Lord. Give them what they need, Lord. Calm the spirit, Lord. You've been ever so gracious. Lord, I want to thank you for what you're doing, for what you've done, and the thing that's going to be down and restored over our life, and this city will be greater with our help and assistance. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, Mayor. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Dillard. The next speaker is Ms. Jessica Jackson. So, Christmas is coming early this year. We're going to check that list when it go up on that wall for voting. And we're going to check it twice. Oh, yeah. And we're going to find out who's been naughty or nice <laughs> based on how y'all vote. And we're going to start it off with Maria Hatton. Uh -oh. Yeah. Chicago and some communities so angry. Why, why is all this kind of anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? And I want to explain to folks, it's because if we cared as much about black people and had over the decades as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 20... All right. That would be Maria Haddon. Stepping out there. I see you. Don't get sarcastic because we can get jiggy, right? You sit up here for that first 51 million talking about how you feel about black people and how you have to have the same energy for black people and you ain't never stood on this floor talking about money for black people. You get on this floor and talk about black and brown because you're somewhere in the middle with it, right? But I'll tell you this, and I'm telling every other black alderman in here today, you vote for the money for these immigrants today, and we're coming for them seats. You can believe that. You're going to stop pimping the black people's plight to get brown people, as y'all call it, money. You're going to give us our press conference, up there on the third floor, keep talking to the mayor's boy with the clink clink from his past. That's why he got to do what the mayor say do. Him and a lot of other ones in here with these shady pass. That's why you got to vote the way that you vote. But all of us ain't got shady passes. Some of us free out here. And we can vote how we want to vote. And we coming for those seats. Now, to align yourself with somebody who's obviously a one-term mayor, if he even makes it that far, you better be worrying about your job. You better be worrying about your longevity. Because we're going to vote, and we're going to get you out. Because you ain't doing right by us. That's what time it is. And for your law person that's next to you, I'm going to need you to check out that federal charge that I got against those public administrators over there for messing with black people's property. It's federal case number 23CV14590, all right? And, it's, and on, 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 that note, on that note, if y'all don't give us our money for the black community, know this, we're getting ready to file a federal injunction against City Hall for benign neglect to the south side and west side. Yeah. You got that? Boom. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Jackson. The next speaker is Ms. Sarah Thomas Lena. Hello, my name is Sarah Tomas Lemna, and I'm a community organizer with Asian Americans Advancing Justice Chicago, and I live in the Fifth Ward. I'm calling on City Council to approve $70 million in funding to support new arrivals until the end of the year. Asian Americans Advancing Justice Chicago has been working on mutual aid with new arrivals across the city for over a year now. In addition, we have been part of the Bring Chicago Home campaign and Stop Shot Spotter Coalition, as well as have advocated for long-term solutions 
like treatment, not trauma. The common thread in what you have heard today is our anger in a broken system that we must reimagine together. It's the system that maintained generational disinvestment in communities of color across Chicago, and this is what prevents our city, one of the richest cities in the world, from paying a little bit more into the public safety net system while schools and mental health clinics shut down in our communities. Food prices, rent, and childcare costs rise, and thousands of our neighbors continue to sleep on the streets. The common thread here is systemic racism, and these disinvestments have kept communities of color down for generations. This systemic racism has also blocked any positive action on immigration from Congress for almost 40 years. Immigrants are simply not a priority in the federal system. And so I want to speak today to urge you to vote on Friday for $70 million, um, from, which will be uh, pulled from city reserves, um, not from any so sort of funding to support individuals impacted by the opioid epidemic. In addition, into those in addition to those $70 million, we also need to start thinking about long-term solutions to fund affordable housing and economic development that will benefit all Chicagoans. So on Friday, this council will have that opportunity, and I urge you to vote yes to borrow $1.25 million over the next five years and to make economic security a reality for more of our neighbors. In addition, I would like to urge Council to vote against the order that calls for Alders to be able to choose whether to remove shot spotter technology on a ward-by-ward -ward basis, and also calls for any decisions related to violence prevention funding to be brought to the Public Safety Committee and to a full City Council vote. We reject the intention and the outcomes of this order and support Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision to cancel the contract with shot spotter citywide. Chicago has long been a welcoming city, and we are committed to ensuring that it remains that way. We are facing a challenging moment, but it's nothing we haven't faced before. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Thomas Linda. The next speaker is Mr. George Blakemore. The problem is racism. I guess you can hear me. The problem is racism. This is worse than communist China. All these people sitting here, they're a member of one party, the democratic machine. These black ones do not have our interests. They work for the master. These big head white men run this system. Man, you can't, they run it. And I, I was looking around, I said, well, how many white women do they have here? You know, doing uh, uh, suffrage. The white woman didn't like that because she couldn't vote and she was like a subject to a, a big head white man. So looking here, I don't see many white women here. Uh-uh, by one or two. So the problem here in Chicago is racism, nepotism, uh, uh, corruption, a one-party system. These big-head white men run this. This big-head man doesn't run this. Okay. The, these black orphans, the, they don't have no power. The, who slates them? Corporate America. Who runs corporate America? These dickhead white men. Now you can be in denial. Now look at you uh, over there passing right here. Look at that while I'm talking. Look, young lady, young lady, sit down. Sit down. Tell her to sit down. Tell her. To, tell her to sit down. So, wait a minute. You, you don't like this? I'm going to tell you, I'm educating you, I'm informing you, I'm enlightening you. These big-head white people that enslaved us brought us here. Now they're giving money to another people. Uh, are they nappy, hair, big nose, thick lips, and a black booty hole like mine? No. 
No, they not. And they're giving millions and millions of dollars to them. Can't you see how arrogant she is when I told her to be seated? She's going to uh, stand up and go, uh, you work for us. Yeah. Mr. Blakemore, please stay in the microphone so we can hear you, sir. Some, Thank you. Something is mighty wrong here, sir. We are still on the white man's plantation. And I urge black people to be selfish. A selfish people. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. Focus on you. They are giving millions. They are, they are showing you better than they can tell you. They are showing you by giving, they're not giving no money to them, these big head white men. We're still on the plantation. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Blakemore. Your time has expired. Your Honor, there are no further speakers for public comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Blakemore, thank you. I need you all to stop shouting. This is now your second warning. I'm doing my best to remain patient. We appreciate you participating in democracy, but I would ask that you also display some decorum. Thank you. All right, resolutions. Before we move forward with our resolutions, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Lee, who wishes to make an acknowledgment. Alderwoman Lee. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I move for the temporary suspension of the rules so that I may acknowledge um, and recognize Seek Awareness and Appreciation Month. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I, I want to rise in honor today of uh, Seek Awareness and Appreciation Month and the profound contributions of the Seek American community to our city. And I'd like to acknowledge our guests in the chamber today for attending the meeting, uh, despite the, the little schedule changing that we've got here. So if I may ask them to stand. Uh, we have Mr. Rajinder Singh Mago. Sarwan Singh Raju, Shiva Singh Khalsa, Sarwan Singh Raju, Navneet Kaur Basin, Balwinder Singh Gurn. April holds a special significance for our Sikh neighbors as it marks the birth month of the Guru Nanak Dev Ji, founder of Sikhism, and the establishment of the Khalsa Order. These events epitomize Sikh values of truth, service, and equality, values that we must uphold as a city. For over a century, Sikh Americans have played a vital role in Chicago's growth and prosperity. And despite being the fifth largest religious community in the world, with approximately 25,000 Sikhs res residing in the greater Chicago community alone, Sikhs continue to be among one of the populations most vulnerable to hate crimes. According to the most recent FBI report on hate crimes, Sikhs still remain the second most targeted group in the nation for religiously motivated hate crimes. And it's our collective duty to stand against all forms of discrimination, echoing Sikh founding principles of egalitarianism and respect for all. And by officially recognizing April as Sikh, uh, awareness, excuse me, Sikh Awareness and Appreciation Month, we reaffirm our commitment to fostering religious diversity, tolerance, and understanding in our city. And I extend my deepest gratitude to the Sikh American community for both their tireless efforts in shaping the city and their tireless insistence that we can and should do better by one another. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Alderwoman Lee. Please, thank you for being here today. Thank you for that recognition. Um, Alderman Robinson has also asked that we uh, take a moment for another acknowledgement. The chair recognizes Alderman Lamont Robinson. Mayor, thank you very much. As part of this legislative body, it's an honor to introduce a resolution commending the Chicago Bar Association. This organization has been a leading advocate for changes to significant parts of Illinois law, including participation in two constitutional conventions, one in 1920 and the other in 1969, and a passage of Illinois Constitution in 1970. The Chicago Bar Association, since its inception, has been dedicated to serving vulnerable populations. This association has made waves of changes throughout its history. It was a main proponent of establishing a juvenile court, 
protecting millions of our children from being lost in the adult penitentiary system. Currently, the CBA is operating numerous programs that benefit the public, including the law, excuse me, including law at the library, call a lawyer, and lawyers in the classroom, all of which serve residents of Chicago and provide legal resources for free. I would like to again congratulate the Chicago Bar Association on its 150th anniversary. And thank you for your contributions in molding our legal system for, for the betterment of the citizens of the city of Chicago. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Robinson. Thank you. Congratulations, 150 years. Thank you for being here. I believe the rules have already been suspended, um, but for just the, for the exercise, um, and I appreciate both Alders, Lee, and Robinson uh, for those recognitions. So now we have a couple of resolutions commemorating the life and the legacy of Cook County Clerk Karen Yarbrough. Um, we are celebrating Arab American Heritage Month, and we are honoring the Lesbian Visibility Week. Alderman Mitchell. Mr. President, I move for the temporary suspension for the, for, for, of the rules for the immediate consideration of these resolutions. Thank you very much. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Um, in the interest of time, we will forego the reading of these resolutions, and we will go straight to city council members who wish to make remarks regarding these resolutions. Our first resolution, again, is commemorating the life and the legacy of Cook County Clerk Karen Yarbrough. Chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. It's with a very heavy heart we stand here today uh, memorializing a giant of our community. Uh, while she did not live in the city of Chicago, she was very influential uh, to everything that happened here. Um, we sat on the executive committee of the Cook County Democratic Party together, and I got to learn upfront and personal, what a force Karen Yarbrough was. Um, there wasn't a day that went by in our proceedings where she didn't fight for her community, but fight for equity and justice for all as well. Um, her loss, your loss, is all of our loss, and I very humbly stand before you and rise to say that our society, our county, is so much better off for having our clerk, Yarborough, serve our community for such a long time. Thank you for sharing her with us and our love, our respect to you, Mr. Yarborough, and the rest of the Yarborough family. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Recognizes Alderman David Moore. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Uh, I wish we'd have just taken the time personally to read that resolution. I know it's time sake, but she was more than worth that time because I haven't gotten a copy of that resolution. Um, but I, I will say this uh, personally for me. Um, over the past like 15 or 16 years that I've known um, Clerk Yabro, uh, we mainly just saw each other at events, hugged each other, talked and loved on one another. And it was more through her cool husband, Henderson, who I, the mayor, the former mayor Henderson, that I would see and just like, man, the way you loved on that woman was just, just something to behold a man to see in terms of the way you all loved on one another. And that's the epitome and excellence of um, black love. But it was the end of February, the middle of February to the end of March that we spoke on the phone almost every day over the last 15 years. We never talked like that. Um, Henderson, not that because we didn't care. We just didn't. We just more or less when we saw each other. But from the mid-February to March 20th, which was the last day I spoke with her, um, she was still, we had no idea, just no idea, because what she was doing was laying the foundation, talking about the work that needs to be done um, in our communities. And when I think of Clerk Yabro, um, 
I think of that name Karen, kind. And for the first time, we sometimes use that name, the word kind, interchangeably with nice. They are two very different words. Um, when you're kind, uh, you're willing to make waves when something isn't right, especially when people are being mistreated. When you're kind, you're most concerned with doing what is right and willing to speak up and take a stand. Nice people never want to rock the boat. <laughs> Clerk Jabro rocked it, and she did it with tact and class. And so um, her name itself, if you look it up, means pure, which points out to the wonderful innocence of childhood and the loving, pure nature a baby embodies. That was her spirit. Because she lived up to her name, and because I know unequivocally she had a personal relationship with God, she is resting in purity. To this family, um, to all of her friends, to um, the, the staff at the uh, county, the clerk's office, you all are in our prayers, not only today, but continuously. And for me personally, whether Henderson, whether it's picking up a broom, whatever I need, I've told you that, big or small, I'm here, and I'm going to be checking in on you. God bless you, and I will keep you all in prayer. And thank God, thank you so much, her family, for sharing her with us. God bless you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Derek Curtis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, too, rise for uh, this resolution. I want to give my uh, condolences to the, to the family. I've known Karen for, oh, my God, uh, almost 30 years. Uh, she's always been a person... Uh, with integrity. Uh, she she uh, joke around a lot, but she was serious. She was really, really serious about the changes that she wanted to make, not only uh, in her community, uh, but for the entire county and the state. Uh, her, her life has been, has been really awesome. Uh, I, I know I call her a lot of times uh, for advice, which she will always answer. And if she didn't, if she didn't answer, she would definitely uh, always give a person a call back. So again, with heavy hearts, um, you know, earth has no sorrow. Of course, the heaven can't heal. So we stand in here with you and the family. Uh, thank you so very much for lending her to us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. Are there any other alders that wish to speak? Chair recognizes Alderwoman Pat Dow. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, rise to be associated with this uh, resolution. Uh, and unto the family and friends of uh, Cook County Clerk Karen Yarborough, on behalf of the residents of the Third Ward, um, we extend our sympathies and heartfelt sympathies to you on your loss. Um, I didn't know Karen for a very long time. I did serve with her as a member of the Cook County Democratic Party. Um, when I joined the executive board for a very short time, she was uh, someone that I looked to because I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and um, uh, she was kind and uh, thoughtful, uh, strong and assertive. And I appreciated that about her. I admired that about her. She was also an encourager, somebody who would uh, give you some sense of how you should be moving, um, how you should be thinking about uh, the world of politics. And I appreciated that. I also want to say that when she gave you her word, she backed it up with action. She just wasn't a mouthpiece. She was uh, sincere about uh, her support. When she gave it, she meant it. And I truly appreciated that. Her loss is a great loss to the city of Chicago and to Cook County. And uh, her memory will not be forgotten. And again, my sympathy to you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderwoman. Are there any other alders that wish to speak to this resolution? Alderman, Alderman, the chair recognizes Alderman Ray Lopez. Good morning and thank you, Mr. President, members of the City Council and to the, to the Yarborough family. You know, my colleagues and I join you today, but I would be remiss if I did not also stand up and 
sing the praises of Karen. Um, I first met her 12 years ago when I was elected Democratic Committeeman. And as we heard, she was, you know, we know she was kind, we know she was loving, but she was a great mentor to everyone that was willing to listen. And I believe that more leaders like her are necessary. Her spirit lives on in all who knew her, not just in, her, not just in this room, but through all of you. All of you who had the pleasure of living with her and seeing all parts of her personality, all parts of her spirit. And as someone who could always count on the truth coming from her lips to my ears uh, and being able to receive it for well over a decade, um, I like to think that she helped mold me into a better elected official than if I had just arrived on the scene being crazy Raymond Lopez. Um, her words never fell on deaf ears when they came to me, and that smile was infectious. And for whatever it's worth, she could teach you how to hug a porcupine and still love every minute of it. And that is a rarity in politics. It's a rarity in leadership for someone to be able to be welcoming to all without being divisive, even when you disagree. Um, so thank you for making the time to be here, for allowing us to not only share in this moment, but share in a lifetime that has meant so much to so many. And to you, Mr. President, thank you for giving the opportunity to this body to join uh, in with you to make this sentiment known. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Stephanie Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, to the Yarbrough family, to Mr. Henderson, I'll never forget before I was elected Alderman, we went over to Broadview Baptist Church and after church, we went to MacArthur's. And I think it was Governor Prisker's first time having some baked chicken and dressing and macaroni together. And I will never forget having lunch with you all and talking about your love story and the amazing work, not only in Proviso, but the impact that uh, your family has had on the West Side and in Chicago, to Legacy, to Cedric. Um, I don't know how you all did it with Clerk Yarbrough when the Recorder of Deeds office was phased out and having to run a primary, a general, and then having to rerun less than two years later. It's so good to see you, Pastor Brooks and First Lady Brooks, and seeing the support for this amazing family and Judge Travis. Clerk Yarbrough was one of the first women to welcome me into Alpha Kappa Alpha. She was one of the first women that I called and the African-American women here of the city council, we have, uh, will be fouling our resolution in addressing violence against black women here in Chicago. It was Clerk Yarbrough who gave me some courage to address some things happening in the Cook County Democratic Party when I was a little afraid to, and she gave me that extra oomph and that wisdom to expose some things, and it worked out in our benefit in our community. To Henderson, Mr. Henderson, to the entire family, to the entire clerk's office, thank you for being her grace and mercy, having her back, being that support, Officer Curry, and sharing her with us in Cook County. An amazing woman, an ivy on the wall, and we are so grateful for her life and her service of 24 years here in Cook County in the city of Chicago. God bless you all, and my prayers and blessings are with you. Thank you, Alderwoman. Are there any other Alders wish to speak to this resolution? Okay, seeing no other hands for the final um, speaker will be Alderman Jason Irvin. The chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. I met Karen twenty-five years ago. At the time, I had no idea what impact she would have on me. She literally just walked up to me and said, I need you to come out to Maywood to help me. Back then, we tallied up election results on paper, and you didn't have the computers and all of that stuff that we have today. And she asked me to come out and help her with, at the time, Henderson was running 
for a trustee out in Maywood. Just weird, you know, just walked up, hey, come do this. And that, that began one of the most phenomenal relationships that I've ever had. Karen was like a mother to me. She hugged us when we needed to be hugged. She chastised us when we needed that too. And people talk about, and I was talking to the family earlier about this kind Karen. And I don't know that kind Karen. Because Karen was always tough on us because she demanded and expected excellence. She demanded and expected us to do what we were capable to do and what we should be doing. And she taught me about what I call a pragmatic progressivism and was laser focused on everything that she wanted us to accomplish. And not only did she work, tell us what to do, she worked beside us in doing it. She always told us that we can always be better and strive for us to do that. Even in my last conversation with her, it was about an issue around housing and about, didn't I tell you to do A, B, and C? I said, yes, we'll get it done. You don't have time. You think you have time, but you don't. Get it done. I said, yes. The same conversation she talked about retirement. I was like, wow, that's a different one. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't get a chance to finish that conversation. Uh, God finished it for us. I love you. Thank you, Alderman. This entire body, this, this council, we love you, the Yarborough family. You know, her career as a public servant, as a state rep, recorder of deeds, and county clerk, she was a barrier breaker. You know, it's a lot when you have a first black, it's different when you have a first black woman. So I happen to believe that first black woman is the creation of humankind. And throughout her time as a public servant, Karen has passed some of the most remarkable legislation to improve the lives of so many people. Karen fought for social justice, women's rights, accessible health care, fair housing. Her efforts are recognized around the globe. The beauty of her leadership is not just defined by how long her legacy will last, because it will last forever. The beauty of Karen is that her love endures. And it certainly endures through you, Henderson Yarbrough, to her family, her friends, to her faith community. Her indelible contributions will be remembered for generations to come in the entire city of Chicago, though we mourn and we grieve and you have our condolences. Know that the people of Chicago are proud to have served alongside of one of the greatest persons to serve in her capacity. So with that, Alderman Mitchell, I'd like for you to offer up a request here. I request that we pass this resolution by rising vote. Members, please rise. <clears throat>
So as we prepare, I just want to give a shout out to a few folks. Thank you again to Mr. Um, Yarbrough, Vicki, Tammy, Antonio, Carmen, Sarah, Denise, Cheryl, Victor, uh, Michaela, Christopher, DeAndre, Curtis, Keith, her pastor, uh, Darius, uh, Brooks, Tim Curry. Thank you all again. We love you. God bless you. Our next resolution is for Arab American Heritage Month. As our guests arrive, are there any alders that wish to speak uh, to this resolution honoring Arab American Heritage Month? All right, the chair recognizes Alderman Laspada. Thank you so much, Mr. President. It is genuinely an honor to stand in recognition and support of this resolution. For all of those in the box who serve in our communities, who start businesses in our communities, who make beautiful poetry and music and life in our communities, I, I'm going to take a moment and be grateful for my mother, who uh, from an early age tuned us into the poetry and the writing of Khalil Zabran from an early age was bringing Arab American art into our lives as a family. I will say I am really proud that I serve in an incredibly diverse body. I hope that I serve long enough to serve with an Arab American older person. I am so grateful to serve with folks in the mayor's administration, like Rawaida Zatar. I hope that I serve long enough to see uh, deeper and more uh, comprehensive Arab American representation in that office as well. There's so much talent. There's so much professional talent and passion and giving in the Arab American community. I hope, and I hope you will hold us accountable to see more representation of your community in this august body, in this room, uh, not just the many wonderful faces in this box. Thank you so much, and thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Viegas. Thank you, Mr. President. I stand to, to be associated with this resolution as well during Arab American Heritage Month, and it was just a couple of years ago that this body took a step in uh, putting forward a resolution that identified the MENA community. Uh, and took a look at, at incorporating it into the way that we identify with hiring, procurement, and put forward a disparity study, which is still being worked on. We were the first city in the country to put forward such a resolution that has now garnered some support at the federal level. And so hopefully in the next census, you will now see forward a new category that states MENA, so that way your community can be identified instead of being identified in a subcategory that you don't recognize with. So I just wanted to congratulate the Arab American community and be associated with the resolution. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Mike Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, I joyfully rise to support 
uh, this resolution. Many friends in the box there. And um, it's not lost upon me that particularly Latino culture is so influenced by uh, Arab culture. I think about one of my favorite vacations was visiting La, the, La Jamba uh, in Granada and understanding that many uh, Spanish words derive from uh, the Arab language. It, it speaks to the fact that not only do we live together in community, not only do we eat together at tables, but our very essence as communities is tied together. And we are greater when we are one. So today I stand to say I am one with my brothers and sisters in the Arab American community. And it is an absolute pleasure uh, to be in such relationship with all of you uh, today and every day. And I got to give a special shout out to a good friend of mine, State Representative Abdel Nasser Rashid, who uh, I enjoyed knocking on doors for him over the last couple of elections. He's a very good friend uh, and has taught me so much about being a leader and an ally in so many of the issues that we tackle day in and day out in our lives. So thank you so much, very much for presenting yourselves today and every day uh, as such leaders, not just in the Arab American community, but in our great city of Chicago. Thank you so much. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alder Maria Haddon. Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise to be associated with this resolution. Um, it was nice to get to meet a few folks in the, in the holding room. And again, I'm just pleased so many people were able to make it with the, the rescheduling pieces. Um, representing the 49th Ward in Rogers Park, um, one of our most diverse uh, wards in the city, um, I just want to stand up, celebrate this month with you. Um, our community celebrates with you. Thank you for making Chicago the great city that it is. Thank you, Aldo. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Deborah Silverstein. Thank you, Mr. President. I stand in support of this resolution. Um, I know Alderwoman Haddon said her ward was the most diverse ward in the city of Chicago, but I beg to differ because um, I say that the 50th ward is the most diverse ward in the city of Chicago with a very large South Asian community. And what I say when I talk about my ward and how much I love it and the diversity is that all of us get along. And if the rest of the world could see how we get along and respect one another, we would all be in a better place. So I just wanted to stand in support of this resolution. Congratulations. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Desmond Yancey. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I too rise in support of this resolution. I, um, 2019, I had the honor and pleasure of being hired as the Senior Director of Organizing and Advocacy at Inner City Muslim Action Network. And it was at that time I came in contact with um, uh, Fatima, who was over at Senate, which is a social service organization in Chicago Lawn. And shortly after that, I became working, began working closely with her daughter, uh, Abir, who was on my staff as an organizer working in Inglewood and Chicago Lawn as we fought for police accountability, food justice, and a number of different things. And what's important about this is um, the concept of social service in Islam talks about rendering service to mankind in order that your creator should be pleased with you. And that that service to creators, creatures rather, should be all-encompassing, universal, and should preferably, preferably be regulated, not on an individual, but a collective basis. And it was in my time working at Iman with black Muslims, largely uh, formerly incarcerated people, and um, Arab Americans who were migrated to this country, seeing people come together in order to build something special in Inglewood is, um, really important to me, and so to have had allies um, support my work, I'm here to support theirs. Thank you. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Nicole Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise in support of this resolution. Um, when I was first appointed, the first, uh, the first remarks I ever gave were for Arab American Heritage Month, so it's got a special place in my heart, um, and I think that we share so much in common between Asian Americans and Arab Americans in our experience and how unique that is to honor our ancestral roots while building lives here in America. And for us um, in the Asian American community, uh, I tell this story every year, so if you just bear with me a second, there's a, I learned that there was a term used um, to describe American-born Chinese. I didn't realize what this was and uh, didn't know what it meant until I was a teenager. 
Um, and the term is juxing, and that literally means hollow bamboo, that you're Chinese on the outside, but not on the inside. So with this constant struggle of trying to fit in um, among the people uh, from the, the country that you came, um, and then also being perceived as some sort of foreigner in the country that you've been born into or you now live, um, is, uh, is something pretty unique. So I want to rise in support of this uh, Arab American Heritage Month. I want to thank each and every one of you for everything that you do every day uh, to represent your communities, to inspire young people, um, to lift up their voices, and to come together um, for a better community for all of us. I, I mentioned earlier doing, during Sikh Awareness uh, and Appreciation in my remarks that they were the uh, second most uh, victimized, or victims of hate crimes. Um, second, third being Arab, Arab Americans and Muslims, first being Jews. I think there's a lot more that unites us than divides us at the end of the day. And I would call for all of us um, to continue to work together to find that peace. Thanks very much. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alder Vasquez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I also rise in association with this resolution. Um, I do not have one of the most diverse awards, but I will move up in the rankings uh, as well as the 49th and the 50th. But I want to really thank uh, really so many in the community that have helped out uh, even before I was elected being able to meet folks with like Vota Syrian and other groups that have helped me learn more about how to be a representative elected official when we have such a population, not only in our ward, but in our city. Um, we often talk about representation. Um, I, in standing this resolution, would ask you all to challenge us. Uh, making sure that MENA is counted in the census and that we think about it as important, but it's also making sure that when we hire, when we think about positions of leadership here in city government, that we are thinking about the representation because although we all may have shared experiences, there is a uniqueness to each group's experience that we need to be informed by. So yes, we have one month where we can stand to show our support. I challenge you to have us do it every month, 365, to think about what we can do legislatively, what we can do to support organizations, and we, what we can do in our neighborhoods to make sure that our neighbors that are Middle Eastern, North African, or Arab American, know that we are here to serve them like everyone else and make sure that we, the inclusion of all the culture, all the knowledge, and all the experience that you bring helps inform and make our city government a better government. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mr. President. I too stand in support of this resolution and want to recognize the significance of this month. Um, as Alderman of the 45th Ward, which has a very strong Arab population, uh, primarily Palestinians who introduced me and welcomed me into the Arab culture, um, I want to show my gratitude. Um, the impact that Arabs have had on me here in Chicago is what encouraged and spurred a lot of my desire for international travel. Um, I, I merely hope that I can give back half of the love and the generosity that Arabs have showed me throughout my life, and I want to thank you and um, welcome you as brothers and sisters. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Vice Mayor Alderman Burnett. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I also rise in support of this resolution. Uh, I just want to say uh, mahaba uh, and shakram for all of the things that you have contributed to our society uh, and to the city of Chicago. I have found that uh, Arab folks have been some of the smartest people that I have met. Uh, some folks may know in my past life I used to be a, um, a draftsman for the highway department, so I got to work with a lot of Arab uh, engineers. Uh, also attending college trying to be an engineer, taking a lot of calculus classes. We used to always have to compete with the Chinese and the Arabs to get good grades in the calculus classes because you guys always we're answering, getting, coming up with the answers first. So I just want to say uh, shukram for your contribution to our society. Thank you for everything that you do uh, in this city. Uh, Hamdu Allah. Thank you, Alderman. Are there any other Alders that wish to speak to this resolution? Thank you. Got you. Chair. Chair recognizes Helu Gutierrez. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I also would like to rise in support of this resolution and thank you all for the hard work that you all do in our great city, especially to Sanat Social Services, which fall in the 14th Ward. We have a huge community also in Chicago alone in Gage Park that we're so proud to work together alongside with you all that um, they serve thousands of people every Friday with their food distribution and helping them to sign up for CETA and for many other services. Uh, you have a problem, they have a solution. So that's what I love about Sanat, that there's no problem, big or small. They take them all into consideration and they help them out. Every single person that work, uh, walks into their office, they get the, 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 the services that they deserve. And I do want to appreciate for your hard work on a single daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other alders that wish to speak to this resolution? Very well. I do want to acknowledge uh, the, um, some of the individuals who are attending today. Abir Abwaid, Fatima Abwaid, Zayana Zatari, Ahmad Rahab, Dr. Zahid Shalou, Suzanne Salu, Dr. Abil Ghani Hameda, Bilal Al Masiri, Kareem Naji, Raid Manasur, Yusuf Vidal, and Yemen Shahede. And so I'm very proud to stand with, with the rest of the city council members supporting this resolution. We have a very proud and vibrant Arab American community that has contributed to the soul of the city of Chicago through their rich cultures, traditions, and history. Arab Americans have made significant contributions in many areas of multiple industries, making our city a better place to work and to live. Arab American Heritage Month gives us the ability to recognize these contributions while also uplifting and empowering the entire community. And during this month, and at all times, it's important that we continue to foster true awareness about the issues and the challenges our Arab American communities face. And they face them every day. Chicago is a diverse, it's a welcoming city. And we are always working to ensure that we continue to create an inclusive society for all residents. And that is why I'm proud, again, to stand with this body, recognizing and celebrating Arab American Heritage Month. Thank you all very much. We have one more resolution. So, Alderman Mitchell, can I get a motion for the passage of this resolution? Omnibus. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Our final resolution is honoring Lesbian Visibility Week. Thank you. Are there any alders that wish to speak to this resolution? Chair recognizes Alder Maria Haddon. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise in support of this resolution and uh, thank my colleague Alder Fuentes for 
bringing it forward uh, with me, and thank you, Mayor, for supporting this as well. Um, I want to name a couple of people that are with us here in the box um, today. Um, so starting off, if you can each maybe just get, I you told you to practice your wave. So when I call your name, give your wave here. Um, so we have Tracy Bain, co-founder of the Windy City Times. We have Mary Morton, founder of the Morton Group. We have Pat McCombs, co-founder of Executive Suite. We have Norma Selden, uh, Dr. Norma Selden, uh, Director of Leadership, Development, and Capacity Building at Equality Illinois. Moni Ruiz Velasco, our Deputy Director at Equality Illinois. Taylor Mason, owner of Taylor's Tacos. And Kathy Monzer of Mountain Moving Coffee House. Um, I want to thank all of our guests for being here. Um, so, uh, Lesbian Visibility Week, uh, once we pass this, it'll be April 22nd through the 28th. Um, just a few notable reasons why we felt it was important to bring this forward for City Council and for the City of Chicago. Um, we're really seeking to amplify voices of those who are most marginalized within our LGBTQ plus community, ensuring that our stories are heard and our experience is acknowledged. Um, just a few uh, lesbian, queer, and non-binary individuals who've played a critical role in uh, our state's history, um, including some of those who have passed on. Uh, we'll name a few. We've got Jane Adams, Lorraine Hansberry, Margaret Anderson, Jane Heap, Pearl M. Hart, Valerie Taylor, Jeanette Howard Foster, Ruth Ellis, Renee Hanover, Marge Summit, Marie J. Kuda, Pat Logue, Bernita Gray, Peg Gray, E. Kitch Childs, Jackie Anderson, Hollis Sigler, Renee Ogletree, Joanne Trapani, Marsha Lippitz, Arlene Halko, Mary York, Christina Santiago, Lisa Tana, Paula Wallowitz, Diana Rodriguez, and Lauren Verdick. I also want to uh, name some key organizations, right, who have documented and helped the lesbian community, including Lavender Women, Lesbian Community Cancer Project, Amigas Latinas, Affinity Community Services, Executive Suite, the Gerber Hart Library, the Legacy Project, Outlines, and Windy City Times newspaper. I want to give uh, acknowledgement to all of the city staff, workers, um, who you may or may not know are part of our LGBTQ community or lesbian community, and Visibility Week is about them too. We still, in this day and time, have people who may not feel comfortable being out in their workplace, being out with their family, um, being out in public, and that's one of the reasons why Visibility Week is very important and why it's also important for myself, um, Alder Fuentes, and then, of course, our uh, nine-member strong uh, LGBTQ plus caucus um, to be present and to make sure that we're standing up for our community. So I want to thank every single person who's here in the box and those who couldn't join us today for being out, for being proud, for being representative of our diverse community, and for being leaders in the city of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes the chair recognizes Alder Woman Scott. Good afternoon. Um, I stand in support of this resolution because of my neighbor Taylor Mason, the owner of Taylor Tacos. Um, I just remember when. Um, We've been neighbors probably for 18 years or so. And I remember when you took your leap of faith and I've always been in your corner and I will continue to be in your corner and I love you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Knudsen. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, this is just a great group in the box. I wanna say thank you to Alders Haddon and Fuentes for bringing this forward. Um, the contribution that lesbians have had on the city of Chicago is quite massive. A lot is sitting in the box. I mean, Tracy Bain, you've been a legend for so long. I've, I've known about you far before I was out and read things you had written far before I was out. Um, and as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I say thank you. Same with, you know, Moni, I, I'm, a, I'm a, um, an alumnus of one of the Equality Illinois boards. Equality really kind of trained me 
in, um, in, in a lot of organizing and politics in Chicago, and I'm so grateful to the organization. And, and Taylor, I just really love your tacos. Uh, <laughs> I, I recommend everyone look at Taylor's tacos when they're looking to cater events because they're, they're incredible, and it's a great contribution. Um, so I want to thank you again for bringing this forward. I also want to recognize, too, that uh, in Chicago, we should be proud of having one of the first black lesbian mayors of the city of Chicago and Mayor Lori Lightfoot. So I want to say thank you for, for that first and how important that was. Um, and uh, I'm really proud to honor this resolution. Thanks for every, every, everybody in the box. Thank you, Alderman. Chair recognizes Alderwoman Nicole Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, rise in support of this resolution. Um, and I rise today as the new chair of the Women's Caucus. So on behalf of all of the women of City Council, thank you. I, I want to honor each and every one of you for everything that you do each and every day um, to make sure that your community is seen and that women are seen for who they are just as they are. It's so important for our community of women to support one another and to ensure that no woman feels alone. Um, and I know that I don't, I don't know each of you very well, but I look forward to getting to know you better um, as a result of this meeting today. Uh, but I know that you make a difference every single day, and I wish you all of the best um, and a, a future of partnership for all of us to ensure that nobody feels alone in this day and age. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Women, and congratulations. Chair recognizes Alder Jesse Fuentes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, I, wa I want to thank all of the women in the box. I think that you all represent such excellence uh, across the city of Chicago, showing very uh, uniquely and eloquently uh, how fierce lesbian women can be in every sector of work across the city of Chicago. It's, in fact, the work of many of you all that inspired me to uh, be a leader in my community, to be comfortable in my skin, to be comfortable in the wardrobe I choose to purchase in my closet. Um, and it is because of many women across the city of Chicago who are openly lesbian that have paved the way for folks like Maria and I to be in city council and to be uh, comfortable in our skin and to lead unapolog unapologetically um, in this legislature and in our wards. This week will allow for us uh, to fulfill that type of... Uh, that type of recognition that is needed in our community, but more importantly, it would allow us to call ourselves to action for a lot of the work that is still needed, even in a city like the city of Chicago, where not all spaces are inclusive, where not all spaces um, are loving and caring. And to belong to a body where we have nine members, a part of our LGBTQ caucus, and to have members who are allies and in solidarity with our community, um, is an indication of all of the work that you all have been a part of and for LGBTQ members who are no longer with us who spent decades getting us here. And I look forward to the next five to six decades in creating a city that we are all very proud of. Um, and I just want to thank my colleague, all the woman Maria Haddon, uh, for leading on this effort and getting us here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Bennett Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise today uh, in strong support of this resolution. Um, my best friend is a lesbian. And uh, I say that because, like Jesse just said, uh, it's weird. It's weird that, that uh, it, it shouldn't be um, in, in an awful way. And I'm going to apologize to you right now for the antics that are happening in the gallery, because you don't deserve it, and you deserve respect. And, and the people in our, our box today are true trailblazers <laughs> and should be honored as such. And so I stand to do that. I stand to work together to find commonalities in the community that we share and remind us that we have more work to do within our own community and beyond. Um, I want to thank all of you who are here for doing the work that you did that gave us a nine-member caucus in this body um, because none of that happens without all of the amazing groundwork that, that came before us. So thank you all. We have more work to do. And again, I apologize. Thank you.
the members of the public who are speaking during presentations, it's dishonorable and disrespectful. So, Mr. Sergeant at Arms, I would ask that you remove those two rows there, please. Please remove them from the chambers. Could you please remove those individuals? Thank you. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, please continue that row there. That's, yes. Thank you, Sergeant at Arms, for restoring some order. Thank you for your patience. It pains me to have to do that. The chair recognizes. Alder Mana Hoppenworth. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to thank my colleagues, Alder Jesse Fuentes and Alder Maria Haddon, for bringing this forward. I represent Edgewater and Andersonville, and we are one of the coolest neighborhoods in the world, <laughs> and it is because of lesbians. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago that we had, you know, blocks and blocks of lesbian-owned small businesses, including um, the Landmark, which my small business is thriving still today, um, Tomboy, Tees, Stargaze, Studio 90. And so um, when we think about the... Um, the survival of neighborhoods. I, I think about Andersonville that is still anchored by a fantastic business, Women and Children First, who we should all think about um, in our own neighborhoods, supporting locally owned small businesses, especially those who are lesbian owned and operated. Um, I want to thank the, everyone in the box and in particular, you know, those who I know and I would like to say, I would like to say I, I'm your friend uh, because we have been working so hard since the women's marches since 2016 and, and we are still underrepresented. Um, I wanna thank all of you who have worked so hard for um, social justice, including marriage equality in the state of Illinois, and um, my friend Tracy Fame, who I worked with 
in, in, uh, at the Chicago Reader, and who created such a safe space for us, um, so much so that I found myself and came out as queer because of that safe space. And, um, and that's what we're trying to do here, is to create spaces for people, no matter what age they are, to find themselves and to live authentically. So I want to extend gratitude for you for being here. I know so many of you could not be here, but I'm so grateful for all the work that you're doing, especially around uh, social justice and civic engagement, housing for everybody, including young people who have been outcast from their own families in the LGBTQ plus communities, including healthcare, mental health. And all of that we know leads to more public safety for everybody. So I wanna thank you for all your work and I, I can't wait to celebrate with you more and to do more work ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alder Vasquez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I am so proud to rise in association uh, with this resolution. I just look at y'all and y'all are just champions and fighters. And as much as, you know, there may have been some uh, disorder happening a little earlier, I know that that's nothing compared to the things that y'all have actually fought against to even have us to the position where you can have these conversations here. I see some OGs in this box that have taught me taught me how to be better. Before I came into office, I remember sitting down with Tracy to grab coffee, and I, could, I just can't picture what it's like being you all and watching us little young organizers thinking we're doing something compared to what you all have actually done. The way you changed the conversation and made sure that it's not just about unapologetic and proud, it's leading on the front lines. It is changing government. It is making organizations. To have that kind of leadership that challenges us to be better, to be able to talk to Moni regularly to make sure I'm better. Uh, then we have 40th Ward neighbors like Mary Morton here with us, Jackie uh, Kaplan Perkins. The organizations that allow us to be allies for real, because what we understand is the struggles that y'all have gone through and the coalitions that you all build uh, span more than just identity. It makes us stronger when it comes to everything we have to fight and all the oppression everybody feels. We all may feel we have it tough. We had nowhere near what some of y'all went through. And to see y'all break through those barriers makes us stronger and makes us better. And I can't thank you all enough for that. When we have or, uh, even business owners coming to the ward, like Nobody's Darling, Whiskey Girls Tavern, and being able to find ways to support our newest generations of leadership, our current generations here, I just can't thank y'all enough. Uh, and, and I just ask you for more. Push us further blow up the phone, send the text messages, anything we need to work, any letters we have to sign, any legislation, we are here because y'all have got us this far and we all know the fight ain't over yet. So thank you so much and thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> Chair recognizes Alder Byron Sixo Lopez. Can you hear me, Chair? Now we can. Yeah, thank you. I also like to be added with this resolution. And um, uh, also want to recognize a few of the, the people that are, and I, even though I'm remote, um, Tracy Ben and many of the uh, freedom fighters that continue to our city. Our city celebrates our diversity. Our city celebrates uh, the wonderful work and the commitment to social justice. Uh, Tracy is not only an advocate, but also as a reporter, reminds me about the importance of local reporting so that the tolerance, and I would say the tolerance is not the, the, the word here, but the values and the opportunity that we have to build the city together. It is something that our elders, our ancestors have built and continues to give us an example. So. I want to thank you all, everybody at, at the bunch, and everybody who continues to believe that a new city and a new day is possible. And I think it is critical today that we build the city together, see the opportunity at the moment. Thank you all for being those 
trailblazers and those example of integrity or diversity is the strength of our city and a new day is possible because of all of you. Thank you so much. It reminds me also, and I will be remiss if I don't mention our good friend, and we talked about it this, Tracy, Kid Duffy, who was a great mentor and an example of the city. So thank you so much as we celebrated um, Carl Washington's birthday, Mayor Washington, and that legacy of a strong rainbow coalition is alive and well. Thank you so much for all of you for building a city together. Thank you. Are there any other alders that wish to speak to this resolution? The chair recognizes Alderman Rosa. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. You know, I want to join with uh, my colleagues in offering sincere apologies for the heckling and remarks that were made today. While that's deeply disappointing, it's a reminder of why we need Lesbian Visibility Day. We've come a long way, and we've come a long way in part because of our honored guests in that box. But we know that there is so much more that we must do to get to true equality, to get to a place in time where everyone can be their authentic self, love who they love, and live their lives with dignity. So I want to thank my lesbian sisters for all the work that you have done to open up the path for a person like me to be able to say that I'm a proud gay man. Because our movement would not be here but for our lesbian sisters and their pride, their strength, their leadership. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's an honor to be in this fight and in this struggle with you. And we're going to make it uh, to the end of the rainbow where all of us are free. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other alders that wish to speak to this resolution? All right, very well. Thank you, older woman Haddon, for um, acknowledging our special guests that are in the box today. This entire body, this council, as we speak favorably towards this resolution, it's a good opportunity for us to be reminded that the city of Chicago is home of a very vibrant and proud, hardworking LGBTQ plus community who have made indelible contributions in every area. You've ultimately helped make the city stronger better, safer. The Lesbian Visibility Week was created to celebrate the diversity and contributions of lesbian, queer, and non-binary individuals in our wonderful city. This week helps to amplify the voices of those often marginalized in the LGBTQ plus community. And it also allows us to ensure that their voices and stories are heard. It also serves as a point of emphasis, the importance of unity while acknowledging our differences and the unique perspectives that we bring to this amazing city. Chicago is committed to being welcoming and diverse and equitable, a city that is just as we stand with the LGBTQ plus community. And of course, to ultimately create a more inclusive society for everyone. And that is why I'm very proud that we stand with you all to recognize Lesbian Visibility Week. All right, very well. Alderman Mitchell, can I get a resolution? Mr. President, I move, Mr. President, I move passage in the omnibus. All right, very well. Hearing no objections, so ordered. All right, Alderman Mitchell, to return to the regular order of business. I move that we return to the regular order of business. Thank you very much. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Communications. Communications from his honor the mayor to the honorable the city council of the city of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the comptroller, I transmit here with an ordinance amending the municipal code to establish water leak relief pilot program. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance would be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, mayor, for the committee on finance. Ladies and gentlemen, I request the commissioner of housing and transmit with here an ordinance authorizing the execution of a TIF redevelopment agreement with Renew Lawn Deal Acquisitions LLC. Favorable consideration of this ordinance to be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on fin Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, request to Commissioner of Planning and Development. I transmit herewith an or ordinance authorizing funding the Small Business Improvement Fund Program and the execution of the 64th Amendment Administrative Services Agreement with the Somer Corps 504, Inc. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance to be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Finance. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I request a budget director and transmit here with a fund 925 amendment. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor. Refer it to the, com the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, I request the Commissioner of Housing and Transmit here with ordinances authorizing favorable tax statuses for specified properties located within the city. Favorable consideration of this ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor. For the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Housing and Transmit here with an ordinance amending the Municipal Code to clarify the Affordable Requirements Ordinance. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor. Referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development I transmit here with ordinances authorizing negotiated sale of city owned properties. For favorable consideration of these ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor. Referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the sale of city-owned properties to adjacent neighborhoods. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the sale of city-owned properties for open spaces use. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of loan sub Subordination, subordination agreement with Pelmark Realty Corporation for the Lincoln Village Senior Apartments. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be pre appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Fleet and Facility Management, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of an amended intergovernmental agreement the Chicago Park District for use of city property lo located at 50 5801 North Pulaski Road. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of an amended services with Uncork Incorporated. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance providing authority to enter non into non disclosure agreements. Favorable consideration of the ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor. With two committees being called, this will go to rules. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Housing and I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the transfer of city owned lots for housing development purposes. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Queen on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of renewed intergovernmental agreement, Chicago Park District and the Forest Preserve District of Cook County to support neighbor space. Your favorable consideration of the ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee of Special Events and Cultural Affairs and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of Adopt a Landmark Agreement with ECG Madison LLC. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed John Zayas as a member of the Community Development Commission for a term effective immediately and expiring February 26, 2028, to succeed Mark B. Brooks, who has resigned. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Ira Acri as a member of the Regional Transportation Authority Board for a term effective meeting and expiring July 1st, 2027 to succeed Thomas J. Codell, who has resigned. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very to the years, Bannon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Tanya Kadaka as a member of the Plan Commission for a term effective immediately and expiring January 25th, 2029, to succeed Smita Shaw, who has resigned. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated very truly yours. Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Adrian Soto as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term expiring July 1st, 2029. Such period allocated as follows. A term effective immediately and expiring July 1st, 2024 to complete the unexpired term of Sam P. Toya, who has resigned, for, followed immediately by a full five-year term. The favorable consideration of this ordinance, our appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Vishali Rowe as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term expiring July 1st, 2029. Such period allocated as follows, a term effective immediately and expiring July 1st, 2024, to complete the unexpired term of Timothy Knutson, who has resigned, following immediately by a full five-year term. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor for the Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I have appointed Kamina Brooks as a member of the Planning Commission or Plan Commission for a term effective immediately and expiring January 25th, 2029, to succeed Deborah C. Moore, who has resigned. Your favorite consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor, for the Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to various special service areas. Your favor consideration of this appointment to be appreciated. Very truly yours, Brandon Johnson, Mayor for the Committee on Ca Economic Capital and Technology Development. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following documents were filed in my office related to the respective subjects designated as follows. Office of the Inspector General's report concerning unprocessed routine background investi investigations for individuals applying for employment with Chicago Police Department. Office of the Inspector General's first quarter report of year 2024. Tabulated statement of returns and proclamation of results of canvas of election returns on March, 20, on March 19, 2024, general primary election. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the City Council that all those matters were considered by the City Council at the regular meeting held on March 2024 and which were required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form or in one or more newspapers were published in pamphlet form on April 17, 2024 by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the journal proceedings of City Council City of Chicago. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the City Council that the resolution and matters related thereto, which were considered by the City Council at the special meeting held on April 1, 2024, which were required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form, or in one and more newspapers, were published in pamphlet form on April 17, 2024, by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the journal proceedings of City Council of City of Chicago. I, City Clerk Valencia, also transmit here with the following miscellaneous communications and reports requiring City Council action. Zoning reclassifications of particular areas referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Claims against the City of Chicago, which referred to the Committee on Finance. Recommendation, recommendation by Commission of Chicago Landmarks for designation of John B. Murphy Memorial at 50 East Airy Street as a Chicago Landmark, which referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Submission to referendum question to Chicago voters regarding taxpayer subsidies to Chicago Bears or Chicago White Sox or to build new stadium to build new stadium or real estate development, which referred to Committee on Committee and Rules. Your Honor, that concludes. The reports and communications from the mayor and other city officers. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Committee reports. Chair recognizes Chairwoman Dow. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council. Reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which held a committee meeting on April 15th and reconvened on April 17th, 2024. The following rec items received a due pass recommendation from the committee. Item number one is an ordinance concerning a loan restructuring agreement with Warren Ashland LP Halstead Limited Partnership for the property at 1533 West Warren Boulevard, 3 North Ashland Avenue, and 11 North Ashland Avenue in the 27th Ward. Mr. President, unless someone wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage of this item by a roll call vote. Seeing no hands, members, please use the e-vote application to record your vote at this time. The voting is now open. The voting is now open. Please use your e-device. Raise your hand if you need support. The voting is now open. Is right, I can do that. I was targeting oh. <laughs> just a second, Alderman, just for a second. The chair, that's okay. The chair recognizes that's okay. The chair recognizes Alderman Conway. If I could be out of the quorum, please. Thank you. Good. We got Very you. Well. <laughs> Alderman Conway will be added to the quorum. All right, I will now call on anyone who has not cast their vote and also anyone online. Alderman Robinson. Alderman Robinson? Okay, Alderwoman Taylor. Yes. Alderman Taylor is a yes. Alderman Cito Lopez. Yes. Alderman Cito Lopez is a yes. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Not in chambers. All right, let me go right back to Alderman Robinson. Are you there? 
Okay. Alderman Robinson is not. Robinson is a yes. Alderman Robinson is a yes. Okay. All right. We are, anyone else? Okay. We are now closing the vote. There are 48 yeas, zero nays. This matter is passed. Alderman Mitchell, in a motion to reconsider. Mr. President, move to reconsider the vote. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. No, this motion fails. Chair recognizes Chairwoman Dow. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Item number two is an ordinance concerning the First Amendment to the issuance of multifamily program funds to Home Keep LLC under the preservation of existing affordable rental program for the property at 2537 North Lowell Avenue, 2904 North Linder Avenue, and 4510 North Central Park Avenue in the 31st and 33rd Ward. I move passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number three is the substitute ordinance concerning the issuance of TIF funds to Ogden Washtenaw A2 Residential LP for the Ogden Washtenaw A2 Residential Project at 1312 South Tallman Avenue in the amount up to $9 million in TIF funds in the 28th Ward. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number four was previously deferred and published. Item five and six consist of orders of authorization for the payment of various small claims against the city of Chicago and the denials of payments of various small claims against the city of Chicago. If there are no objections, I move that these items be placed in the passage for in the omnibus. Hearing none, so ordered. Item number seven are proposed orders authorizing charitable solicitation on the public way tag days permits for Grassroot Team LLC, better known as Amnesty International, from April 18th to August 30th, 2024, and International Rescue Committee from April 29th through December 31st, 2024. This will be placed on file with the clerk. Item number eight is the report of cases in which verdicts, judgments, or settlements were entered into for the month of March 2024. This will be placed on file with the clerk. Item number 9A is an order authorizing Corporation Council to enter into and execute a settlement order in the case of Felicia Petties versus City of Chicago and Stephen Learakis, case number 2020-L12, 425 in the amount of $175,000. I move passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number 9B is an order authorizing Corporation Council to enter into and execute a settlement order in the case of Marilyn Salazar versus Erica Perez and the City of Chicago case number 2019-L9823 in the amount of $385,000. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number 9C is an order authorizing Corporation Council to enter into and execute a settlement order in the case of Brian Mejia versus City of Chicago, case number 2021-L004753 in the amount of $750,000. I move passage of this item by the same motion with the exception of Alderman Quinn, Lopez, Curtis, Cardona, Spazzato, and Riley, who all wish to be recording as voting no. I can add Gardner, I see Tabaris's hand and Napolitano's hand, Chico's hand, and the chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Mr. President. Alderman Riley and I move to defer and publish this item. I already moved passage of I, it. Can you do that after it's been moved for passage? Okay, it'll be deferred and published. The Committee on Finance also met on March 22nd and April 11th 
for subject matter hearings to discuss the issuance of general obligation and or sales tax securitization corporation bonds for economic development and affordable housing programs. No votes were taken at these meetings. Mr. President, this concludes my report from the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next up, the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. The Chair recognizes Chairman Irvin. Thank you, Mr. President. Reported for the Committee on Budget and Government Operations for a meeting which was held on April 15th. The committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following item. Item number three is a communication recommending a proposed uh, ordinance concerning a transfer of funds within the 39th Ward automatic expense account and award wage allowance for year 2024. Ordinance 2024-0008163. A move to concur, uh, move passage of, of the item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee on Con Chair recognizes Alderman Rosa. Yes, please. Unfortunately, I had to step out, uh, but I would like to be recorded as voting yes on the first item of the Finance Committee report. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Madam Clerk. Please add, Mr. Clerk, please. Um, add Alderman Rosa as a yes vote. Next up, Committee on Contract and Oversight and Equity. Chair recognizes Chairwoman Mitz. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for the Committee on Contracts, Oversight and Equity. We held a meeting on April 2024 to consider the following. Item number one R two zero two four dash zero 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 eight three three zero an expression of support for MWDBE program and calling for a US Congress to protect the US Department of Transportation Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program sponsored by Ottoman Mitz. Mr. President, if no one wants wish to speak on that, I would like to make a statement. So we do have one older that wishes to speak. I don't see any other hands. Are you good? All right. So back to you, Alderwoman Chair. Chair, Ald what, what is it? What am I doing here? Chairwoman. Thank back you. To you. This is a very uh, very challenging time for women's and minority contractors. They are continuing to face discrimination in the construction industry from being picked as a subcontractor on projects to ensure bonding to obtain financing so they can survive while they're waiting for the city to pay. With payments delayed exceeding 180 days, they need lots of financing. Now they're facing an even bigger threat. Several lawsuits challenging the DBE program have been filed in cities across our countries. One lawsuit that is pending in federal court in Kentucky could wipe out the DBE program nationwide. This resolution is urging congressmen to do more whatever is necessary to prevent the DBE program. Here in Chicago, the city council put their MWBE program in place to help level the playing field so women's and minorities have equal access to contracts and opportunities here. We will defend our MWBE program and take whatever steps are necessary to ensure women's and minority contractors have equal access to Chicago construction opportunities. But we can't do it alone and we are pleased to once again have partners WCOE, AACE, BCOE, FWC, and HACIA working in lockstep with us to get this done. Mr. President, I move that the City Council concur in the recommendation of the Contract Oversight and Equity Committee by the same roll call as item number one on the Committee of Finance report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. All right, the chair recognizes Alderman Moore. This is um, item number one or two. This is item number one. Um, yes, can, can you um, bring your mic towards you? Thank you. 
Thank you. Your oh, she was still on 8330. She was just commenting on the MBWB. That is, that is correct. Thank Alderman. you, Chairman. I mean, Mr. President, that's it. Okay. I just wanted to be clear. All right, very well. So seeing no other hands, hearing no objections, so ordered. Item number two, 0204-000-8352, an ordinance to execute of master service agreement with Data Made LLC for research, design, development, hosting, and support of public face facing application regarding planning, development, and zoning development process and other city operations sponsored by Mayor Johnson. Mr. Mayor, I think this is the Alderman Moore would like to speak on this item. Yeah, I noticed that his hand went up. <laughs> Chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, unfortunately for me, um, as I um, attended the meeting of contract oversight and um, development here, uh, community on contract oversight and equity, I mean. Um, the fact that this is a sole source contract and a testimony that was given um, that there were no um, other vendors, specifically minority vendors um, and specifically African American vendors that couldn't do this um, work um, did not sit well with me. So as I did my due diligence, um, I found out that there were. And, and in my opinion, this should not be a sole source contract. And I think there's some dialogue and more information needs to be, be had, I believe, with probably the members of the Black Caucus. And then if they want to determine that they're satisfied with it, then we can bring it up for a um, vote. But until then, myself and Alderman Raymond Lopez move to defer and publish this item. All right, thank you. The item will be deferred and published. Chairwoman Mitz. Mitz. Mr. President, that would conclude my, my report. Very well, thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you. The Committee on Economic Capital and Te Technology Development, the Chair recognizes Chairman Villegas. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, members of the City Council, reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which met on Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. The Committee held a meeting and recommends pass of the following items. Item one on the agenda is the appointment of Nick Lucius as Chief Information Officer, which was collectively voted on by the committee members and introduced by Mayor Johnson at the March 20th City, city Council meeting. If anyone wishes to speak on this item, I reserve the right to close. Very well. Are there, the chair recognizes Alderman David Moore. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, again, um, as I... Um, was investigating this um, situation regarding the contract. And as I began to talk to, as I tell people, we got to talk to people that we know and that we trust. I know we can go sometimes um, by resumes and um, things like that. But it has come to my attention um, that on this confirmation that most of the business um, vendor community uh, believe that this person is not experienced enough to be the CIO of the third largest city in the United States. Um, they pointed out and with um, some support, so support, support documentation to me that no prior experience ever running a technology division or department has no prior experience as a CIO, which is normally in the set, um, which is usually set um, when such a person is being um, uh, presented, has limited experience in managing any large scales technology projects or programs. As I tell people in this business, as, as aldermen, uh, we, get, we get to deal with a lot. And, and I don't claim to be a subject matter expert, especially in technology. But when we haven't done our due diligence, African American community, uh, for people that we're gonna make sure that have our best interests at hand and making sure that there's equity in that office, meaning representation in that office, and in contracting, um, that when people in our community who is, are in those spaces are having these concerns, then we have to stand up and um, speak for them. And so until 
um, I believe a conversation again is had with the Black Caucus and if they feel comfortable about it and want to move forward with it, then at that time we will. So at this time, um, along with Alderman Lopez, we defer and publish this item. Thank you. The item will be deferred and published. Chair recognizes Chairman Viegas. Thank you, Mr. President. Items 2 through 10 on the report are a series of appointments to various special service areas. The following individuals are being considered before the committee. Number 2 and 3, appointments of Joseph Chico and Jessica Smith to SSA Number 5, Commercial Avenue Commission, located in 7th and 10th Wards. Appointment of P. Matt Letterer to SSA Number 27, West Lakeview Commission. Number five and six, appointments of Eva B. Baldinger and Sarah M. Dalkin to SSA number 29-2014, the West Town Commission. Appointment of Shantae A. McDonald to SSA number 42, 71st Street Stony Commission. Number eight and nine, appointments of Jelena Vetskosva and Kurt L. Maiman to SSA number 60, Albany Park Commission. Number 10, appointment of Charles Newsom, SSA number 61-2023, Hyde Park Commission. I move for pass of these appointments by the first favorable roll call of, the, of the, uh, the roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item 11 on the report is an ordinance to approve the issuance of a Class 6B tax incentive for the property at 4900 to 4940 West Grand Avenue in the 36th Ward. I move for pass of this item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so moved. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my report. Next up, we have reports from the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. <laughs> Mr. President and members of the City Council, reporting for your Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which held an in-person meeting on Wednesday, April 10, 2024. The Committee has a series of reports recommending passes of four ordinances and one resolution. These include a lease agreement, a land sale, a municipal code amendment, and one resolution calling for a hearing. The first item is from the Department of Fleet and Facility Management. Item 1, Ordinance 2024 000 8410 renewal of lease agreement with Chicago Children's Advocacy Center for building and parking facility located at 1240 South Damon Avenue, supporting centralization of medical and mental health experts, children protective services, law enforcement, and family advocates in the 28th Ward. I move passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call vote on the committee on <clears throat> on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. No. The next item is from the Department of Planning and Development. Out of girls. Item 2, Ordinance 2024-000-8414, sale of vacant city as is property at 4741 South Indiana Avenue in combination with owner's property at 4739 and 4743 South Indiana Avenue for development and construction of two three-story residential buildings. I move passes of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objections, so ordered. The following is an automatic The following is an automatic introduction by First Word Alderman Daniel Laspada. Item 302, Ordinance 2024-000-8244, designation of 2000 to 2294 North Milwaukee Avenue as low affordability community. First Ward. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objections, so ordered. The last two items are automatic introductions from, th from 36 Ward Alderman Gilbert Viegas. Both items pass as substitute and committee. Item four, 
Substitute Ordinance 2024-000-6982. Call for hearings on CHA's plan of action to address vacancy rates of scattered site properties. In item five, substitute ordinance 2023-000-2888, amendment of municipal code section 2-44-085 regarding veteran preference for residential housing purchasers of renters under affordability requirements. Madam President, I, Mr. President. I'm back, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not the worst thing to be called a madam. I'm just saying. It's my honor. All right. Hey, we need it that, guys. Uh, I understand that uh, Chairman Viegas would like to speak on this matter. Very well. Ch the chair recognizes Alderman Viegas. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, um, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Housing Com Committee for voting uh, favorably for this ordinance. And this is a landmark ordinance that we're passing today. Um, this is an ordinance that's focused around the ARO. Oftentimes, the veteran community is always talked about, um, are, are, is, always, is always singled out around the homeless community. And so every time we talk about the homeless community, they say that veterans, we need to do more for our veterans. What this ordinance does is exactly that. It puts forward a mechanism to identify at least 10% the ARO for veterans. The veteran community in Washington, the, uh, Congress in Washington, D.C. is working very hard to bring additional resources to the veteran community. The Veteran Affairs Supportive Housing, often known as VASH vouchers, are putting forward tons of money which would allow for the veteran, the veteran uh, community to be more attractive for developers that are looking to fulfill the ARO requirement. This ordinance will greatly improve the lives of Chicago veterans by providing them with more affordable housing opportunities. According to the VA and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, in 2023, the number of veterans experiencing homelessness in the U.S. increased by 7.4% from the year prior. Veterans homelessness is an urgent issue that needs to be addressed, and this ordinance is an important step for us to take as a city. This ordinance will require certain developers in Chicago to establish a process to give preference to veterans for at least 10% of the minimum number of affordable units under the, the affordability requirements ordinance. Additionally, this ordinance will require minimum periods during which developers must market to and reserve affordable units for veterans, improving outreach efforts. Again, thank you for the support of this ordinance. Uh, I believe that this is one of the first set-asides uh, in the country around ARO for veteran community. And I urge my colleagues to support this. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Chairman Mitchell. Thank you for that, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> you got that, Chairman. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Chairman Vegas. I move passage of this item by the same motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mr. President, that includes my report. Thank you. Committee on Immigrant and refugee rights. All right, we'll move on. All right, Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Chair recognizes Alderwoman Silverstein. Thank you, Mr. President and members of City Council. I am reporting for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. We held a meeting on April 10th, 2024 to consider four ordinances regarding liquor moratoriums in the 21st, 34th, and 48th wards. The committee has recommended passage of each of these items, O2024-000-8227, and others ending 8329-8331 and 8388. Mr. President, I move that the City Council concur in the recommendations of the License Committee by the same roll call as item number one of the Committee on Finance Report and the Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. O2024-000-8378, an ordinance to amend Chapter 9-130 of the Municipal Code of Chicago, regulating scooter sharing business licenses uh, introduced by the Office of the Mayor and Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. I move passage of this item by the same motion with the exception of Aldermans Quinn and Tabaras. Um, 
and Lopez. Um, if there is no other objection. Hearing none, despite, despite the division, so ordered. 02024-0008400, an ordinance to amend Chapter 9 of the Municipal Code of Chicago regarding pedicab license decal requirements sponsored by Alderman Riley. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing none, so ordered. 02024-0008446 was held in committee. Mr. President, this concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Committee on Immigrant and Refugee, Refugee Rights, the Chair recognizes Chairperson Vasquez. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and members of the City Council, reporting for your Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights, which held a committee meeting on March 28th, 2024. There was one item on the agenda, 002024-0008386, to expand new arrival shelter exit reporting, which then pass as substitute ordinance SO2024-000836. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Mr. President, this concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. The Chair recognizes Chairperson Laspada. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety for which a meeting was held on Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Before the committee, there were 178 routine traffic items, all of which passed. If there are no objections, I move passage of these items by the first most favorable roll call vote from the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider the vote. Hearing no objections, so ordered. That concludes my report. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up, the Committee on Police and Fire. The Chair recognizes Chairman Taliaferro. Mr. President and members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on Police and Fire, for which a meeting was held April 1st, 2024. Uh, there are two items on the agenda for which the Committee recommended passage. The Committee recommends the passage of substitute ordinance as amended 2023-5726, the amendment of Municipal Code Section 2-152-410 by modifying the mandatory retirement age for police officers. Mr. President, if there is no objection, I move the passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call in the Committee on Finance and the um, associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mr. President, also before the committee, in which the committee recommended the passage, substitute ordinance 2024-7759. The substitute ordinance calling on Mayor Brandon Johnson to re remedy by ward choice, whether to remedy by ward choice, whether to remove sound thinking, shot spotter, surveillance technology with other assurances and advanced notifications to affected ward council members choosing to retain this surveillance technology. Mr. President. Please continue. Mr. President, if there's no objection, I move the passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call vote in the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Chair recognizes Alderman Laspada. Mr. President, Alderwoman Rosana Rodriguez Sanchez and I move to defer and publish this item. This item will be deferred and published. Chair recognizes Chairman Talifaro. Mr. President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Next up, the Committee on Public Safety. Chair recognizes Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for your Committee on Public Safety, which held a meeting pursuant to published notice on April 17, 2024. The committee had three items on the agenda. Item one was approval of the Rule 45 report for March. Item two, Mayoral Ordinance 8373, establishment of a security footprint zone, uh, including regulations and authority over convention-related activities and agreements regarding hosting of the Democratic National Convention during the month of August 2024. If no one wishes to speak, I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call in the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Seeing no hands, hearing no objections, so ordered. The third item was a subject matter only uh, item. No vote was taken regarding acquisition of a Bell 429 police helicopter uh, at a cost of $11 million to, uh, paid for by the DNC. Uh, no vote was taken on that matter. More information is available on the clerk's website and the Public Safety Committee website at aldermanhopkins.com. Uh, this concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Next committee, special events, 
Cultural Affairs and Recreation. The chair recognizes Chairman Spazzato. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for your Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, Recreation, also known as the Happy Committee, which held a meeting on April 10th, 2024. The committee recommends patches of the following items. R2023-0002814, congratulations extended to Hip Hop, Chicago Hip Hop community on the 50th anniversary of Hip Hop. Well, I, I, I well done, Chairman, well done. I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know if my colleague would like to say something. If we, could we allow him if he chooses to see here? He's gone. Okay, I guess it's not that important to him. But uh, <laughs> I, I move passage this item by the first favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Simmer down. All right. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Like I said, it's the happy committee. We got to lighten things up over here, people. Uh, Ordinance number 2024-0008346, expenditure of open space impact fees for environmental cleanup costs at 2420 North Sacramento. I move passage to this item by the first favorable roll call of the Committee on Finance and an associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no, hearing no objection, hearing no objection, so ordered. Item A, 2024-0008363, the appointment, oh, she is there, okay. Oh, we don't have any games, people. Uh, appointment of Clene Hedspeth as Commissioner of the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events. I, I would like to speak last, if anybody would like hey, to speak. Yes, the Chair recognizes Alderman Ray Lopez. Challenge accepted, Nick. No, just kidding. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. President, uh, members of the committee. Uh, I do not rise to DMP this appointment, but I do rise to congratulate you and to thank you um, for reaching out to my office. I look forward to welcoming you and uh, some of my old colleagues back to the 15th Ward. And I think personally, seeing an expansion of activities in our neighborhoods where festivals and events and activities are decentralized, continue to be decentralized out of downtown and into the 77 neighborhoods that make up the greatest city in the world. Uh, I look forward to the opportunity of working with you and your team, uh, old and new, uh, to make that happen and wish you all the best in this role and urge you to make the Taste of Chicago a full 10-day experience of food and fun once again um, throughout uh, both downtown and the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman David Moore. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, as, as we always uh, try to say, as long as you qualify, um, the, uh, whoever comes into this office has the right to appoint anyone that they want to appoint. And um, I stand in fully support of this um, appointment, uh, Mr. President, a fine selection was made. Um, yes, uh, we will miss um, the prior person that was here, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't have somebody else ready that can step in and do just as better of a job. And so I am happy, number one, just elated. Um, I don't even sit on a committee that you, you, you reached out um, to other, uh, me. I don't sit on a, on a committee. You also um, opened um, your time up to have further conversations, not only to get to know you from a business standpoint, but to get to know who you are. And that person who you are is somebody that we need in this council. So uh, I'm in full support of this, and I, and I hope with a unanimous, unanimous vote, um, I move that we definitely um, support this um, nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alder Vasquez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I stand uh, to commend you for this uh, appointment. Um, I really appreciate my colleagues' statement that an executive has the right to appoint who they want for a commissioner. Uh, thank you for that. I uh, want to make sure I also give much credit uh, for the commissioner here. I think when we think about what this city can do, how it uplifts people from their experience and how challenging it can be to survive in this city, there are many of us who if it wasn't for art or music or the ability to express ourselves, wouldn't be here now. 
And so I really appreciate having you in a position to help continue that legacy that Chicago has of being the soul, not just of this city, but of the country. There's a lot that everyone can learn from Chicago, and if they pay attention to the music, if they look at the art, if they hear what we have to bring, we'll increase our tourism, we'll increase our economy, and so I look forward to partnering with you in every chance that we can, and so when me and Nick work on our next mixtape together, want to make sure we could pump that out with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you very much. All right, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise as the vice chair of Special Events Committee, the Happy Committee, as Nick called it, uh, in support of this um, appointment. And uh, I look forward to working with you. We had an amazing conversation. I, like, like we've all said, you have an amazing staff. And we just look, we look and we continue, we will continue to work with you and support you the best way that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman. The chair recognizes Alderman Burnett. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I also rise in support of this, this appointment and commend you on this appointment. Uh, as the former uh, chair of the Special Events uh, Committee uh, years ago, uh, <laughs> how many years ago? All right, you've been talking to the mayor, man? Okay, okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanna say appreciate your comments at the uh, committee hearing. Uh, I want to thank you and everyone who take these positions, uh, just like the former positions that we were trying to do appointments on. Uh, first of all, thank you for bringing your friends and your family. We need to recognize that people bring down their friends, their families, their kids, their grandparents. You know, we need to recognize that when we get up and talk about folks uh, and be cognizant of the folks that's you know, there with them, because it may tank them for the rest of their lives. Um, so I just want to say, um, I commend you for taking on this task. I know a lot of folks come to the city who could actually get more money working somewhere else. So we really appreciate your civic duty. Uh, I'd like to also commend you on the advisor that you have next to you. Uh, who have worked for procurement many years ago and probably uh, many other city uh, departments many years ago and has a, a, a great experience on dealing with uh, the city budgets, contracts, and all of those things. So you're very fortunate to have them on your side, even though you probably don't want them in your work business, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but I just want to say hello to uh, Mr. Ratcliffe, Troy. How you doing, Troy? Um, but, but I commend you on taking on this position. I look forward to working with you. Uh, your comments was very on point about the future of attracting more people to the city of Chicago, especially events is very important because it, it can potentially help our economic engine continue to grow. So I just want to say thank you and I look forward to working with you. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, rise in support of this. Um, I just wanted to uh, take a minute to thank you for your professionalism, for reaching out, uh, for sharing uh, your wisdom with us. Just those little things, I think, in life mean a big difference. Um, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best, and I want to thank your family for coming here today to uh, celebrate with you. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Yancey. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, too, rise in support of this resolution. I want to congratulate Fifth Ward resident Clinton Hetspeth, uh, who's also a longtime president of the Hyde Park Historical Society. Uh, great things come from the Fifth Ward, and you are one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Chair recognizes Alderman William Hall. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to, to uh, stand and rise in support of this appointment, and uh, also want to say that your history and the work that you've done to share history is phenomenal. And so I'm looking forward to neighborhood history, cultural currency, and a better Chicago through the work of you and your great team that has held it down in anticipation of this. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. Are there any other Alders wish to speak before we give the final words to our chair? Seeing no other hands, the chair recognizes Chairman Spazzato. Hey, guys. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Clinet, um, welcome aboard. Uh, I, I, you know you've been here about a month already, I believe, so you inherited an awesome staff. Uh, I'm sure it's a fun job, a lot of positive things to do. Um, so we look forward to working with you. As you know, in your attempts, some people are easier to get a hold of than others. So uh, hopefully uh, people answer your phone a little more often in the future um, when they need things. And uh, just look forward to working with you and all the great things that we're going to continue to do for this city. Um, many of us will have some uh, great ideas that I'll be sharing with you. And uh, like I say, once again, congratulations. and look forward to working with you. So with that, Mr. President. Yes, sir. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Congratulations, Ms. Hesford. Walter. Walter. Okay, um, just a little space over here for our, our, um, our chairperson. Thank you. The chair recognizes, again, Chairman Spazzato. Thanks once again, Mr. President. Uh, the following items have been grouped uh, together for convenience. Um, item A2024-0008364 the appointment of Robert D. Castaneda for Commissioner of Chicago Park District. Item A2024-000. 8365, the appointment of Sean C. Garrett as Commissioner of Chicago Park District. A2024-000-8366, the appointment of Philip J. Jackson as Commissioner of the Chicago Park District. A2024-000-8367, the appointment of Koya Paz as Commissioner of Chicago Park District. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote on the Committee of Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. This concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee on Transportation and Public Way. The chair recognizes Chairman Mitchell. Mr. President, members of the City Council, reporting for your Committee on Transportation and Public Way, which held a meeting on April 10, 2024, the following items passed by the majority of the members present. Page two, item one, ordinance 2024-000-8347 is a mayoral ordinance introduced by the office of the mayor. Page two, item two, ordinance 2024-000-8368 is a mayoral ordinance for the appointment of Dr. Michael Eady to the Chicago Transit Board. Pages three through, three through five includes 19 ordinances for miscellaneous items introduced by the local alderman from wards five, 6, 11, 18, 20, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 38, 43, 44, and 47. Page 6 includes items, item ordinance 2024-000-8375, a subdivision ordinance for a property located in the 45th Ward. Page 7 includes item 02, Ordinance 2024-0007914, an easement ordinance for a property located in the fourth ward. Page seven includes item ordinance 2024-000-8397, a dedication ordinance for a property located in the seventh ward. Page seven includes item ordinance 2024-000-8155, a vacation ordinance for a property located in the 11th Ward, and item ordinance 2024-7699, a vacation ordinance located in the 25th Ward. If there is no objection, 
I move passage of these items by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the, uns and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mr. President, this concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee on Workforce Development. The chair recognizes Chairman Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for the Committee on Workforce Development, which held a meeting on Thursday, April 11, 2024, there was one item on the agenda, 02023-0002891, an amendment of Municipal Code Section 2-74-020, regarding veteran preference initiatives and requirements for sitting hiring. At the meeting, a substitute ordinance was adopted, SO2023-0002891, which was passed out of a committee by unanimous votes before I move passage, uh, Chairperson Villegas has asked to speak to this item. The chair recognizes. Okay. Ah. The chair recognizes Alderman Conway. I rise very much in support of this. You know, as someone that was uh, still in the still in the Navy, but sent overseas twice. Um, when when you're deployed in a war environment, you have a very specific mission, whether it is watching an Al-Qaeda training camp or Russian submarine activity, that is your entire life. You're probably carrying a gun the whole time. You're in a, you're in a uh, dangerous area, and that is your entire life. And then one day, it stops. Here are your, here are your uh, demobilization orders, time to go home. And then you come home, and you're just displaced. You're there kind of back with your family. You don't really have a lot of structure in your life. And it's, it's just very jarring. And it's those kind of folks that we, um, that we really need to help. So I, um, having experienced that myself, I just want to thank um, you all in this body and uh, Chairman Villegas for leading, leading this effort to, to help veterans. Thank you very much. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Villegas. Thank you, Mr. President. I <clears throat> rise to support this ordinance. Um, the second ordinance uh, that we introduce will mandate the creation of a citywide veterans hiring preference for city job positions that are outside of public safety. So we have veterans preference right now for police and fire, but as we know, there are other, there are other positions within military that veterans serve in. So whether they're in IT, whether they're a truck driver, or their administration, this allows them an opportunity to be a part of that workforce. And I speak about this ordinance and introduce this ordinance from a personal perspective. As a Marine, uh, 22 years old, being honorably discharged, going from full employment to unemployment was really disheartening. And um, I said that if I, if I was ever in a position to um, put forward a path for veterans to be hired and housed, that I would do it. And so the two ordinances that we have today speak specifically to that. Um, this is a continuation of my work along uh, Helmets to Hard Hats, which was a program I worked with the Teamster President, Mick Yeager, where we were identifying veterans that could drive, that drove a truck during wartime, but had to go get a CDL license um, after they were honorably discharged. Um, and then we worked with him with help, uh, helmets to health care. And so um, you could be a phlebotomist being shot at, and then when you came home, you had to get a license to draw blood. And I think that these are the types of legislation and common sense that we need to introduce so that way we can make Chicago a beacon for veterans when they're honorably discharged and help grow the city's population. Once our ordinance is passed, the Commissioner of Human Resources and the Mayor's Office of Veteran Affairs will develop and publicize this veteran hiring preference, preference program, expanding our, expanding our reach to veterans across our city and across our state. Not only are we helping veterans find employment through this program, but we're helping our cities by attracting new talent to Chicago. Right now, only one in four veterans in our country has a job lined up after leaving the armed forces. With this new ordinance, our city can change those statistics and encourage our veterans to serve in a new way. I strongly ask for an I vote on this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. Chair recognizes Chairman Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. President, I move that this 
item uh, be passed by the first small favorable vote of the Committee on Finance uh, if there's no objections. Here are no objections. It's so ordered. This concludes the report of the Committee on Workforce Development. Thank you, Chairman. Final report, Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. The Chair recognizes Vice Chair Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council, presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, which held meetings on April 9th and April 16th. These reports were grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by a majority of the members present. Document number A, 2024-0008-369, the appointment of Marlene Hopkins as the Commissioner of the Department of Buildings. Uh, Mr. President, I believe some of my colleagues may want to speak on this matter, um, so I will uh, reserve the right to close and make the motion. Very well. Are there any alders that truly wish to speak on this matter? All right, the Chair recognizes Alderwoman Dow. Well, I get to be the first one to... Uh... Uh, to uh, say, Mr. President, that this is a great appointment. Um, this appointment is long overdue, and uh, this is uh, Marlene's season. Uh, Marlene, I'm glad to see you in this position. And I only stood up, to be honest, to say hello to your mother, who I follow, I follow you guys on Facebook. And so I have seen the I've seen her all over Facebook, and I see the love that you have for your mother and how proud your mother must be of you today. And so, uh, Mr. President, I just wanted to uh, give you my thanks for this appointment and to say how great it was. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes Alderman Beal. Thank you, Mr. President. I had two rise to enthusiastically support this appointment. And I didn't know that was her mother. I thought it was her sister sitting next to her, all right? But it's good that uh, your mom is here to support you because uh, I know she has supported you every step of the way as well as all of us here. And as I said in your confirmation hearing that this is way past due, that you have been the commissioner in that department for about 15 years because everybody knows we don't call the commissioner, you call Marlene. And because if you call the commissioner, the commissioner is gonna call Marlene. And so we'll just cut straight to the chase and call her directly because she's going to be the one that service uh, your request anyway. But Marlene, I just wanted to let you know how proud I am of you. We've been a big fan of, of you here in the city for a long time because of your service. Your work speaks for itself. And so I'm glad that you are finally getting your just due. Your star will continue to shine. And this is a great appointment. So thank you for this appointment, Mr. President. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Alderman Bill. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise to support this appointment. I think this is one of my most favorite appointments ever. And I've been around here for a little while. And so Marlene, who is a true leader and puts all that tr true leadership in capital letters, I can't begin to tell you what this appointment means to me and my community because Marlene is the boots on the ground. When you out there in the ward, driving around, you're going to bump into Marlene. She's going to be in that little white truck with a pad, writing down something in the computer, typing up something. Uh, Marlene is a person you see when you have trouble buildings. She is the lead person. And what I've always loved about you is that you could have sent a staff person, you could have sent anybody, but you come yourself. And you see it with your own eyes. And you evaluate it with your own eyes. For people that don't know, Marlene has wrote all of the recent codes since I've been here for the building department. So when she can, looks at that book, and it's about that thick, she could tell you just about every piece of code in that book because she understands it, she knows it, and that's <coughs> super important around here to have somebody at the building department that understands the building code and the law around the building department. Um, again, she is the specialist in the building department. It is an amazing time in my career to have you sitting here as the commissioner. I could not be proud of you. Um, but most of all, I'm proud of your mom, who's my constituent, and, <laughs> and, and lives next door to my sister. So I said, oh, we going downtown, Marlene's mom going to be down there today. So she sends her love and says congratulations to you, uh, Marlene, for being such an amazing black woman and an amazing leader. And again, uh, all of us here are super proud of you. Thank you, Alderman Harris. The chair recognizes Alderman Will Hall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, too, stand in full support. The very first time I met 
Um, this commissioner um, was literally in the car with Cole and uh, we had some issues with some abandoned homes and on her off day, she came and showed me areas that she was going to get things right. In less than a year, she hasn't not only gotten it right, she's gotten it done with excellence. And so that excellence is seen through the lens of her mother. And so I thank you so much, Commissioner, for always answering the phone, always getting it right, and always showing up. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, too, enthusiastically rise in support of this appointment. Um, while I haven't been around as long as some of my colleagues have, I can say unequivocally that since the day that I met Merlene, uh, she's been nothing but the consummate professional. She oozes integrity, um, and she has a heart for this city like very few others that I know. Um, as, a, as a freshman alder person, uh, she took me under her wing and taught me uh, quite a bit. Um, and her commitment, as many of my colleagues have already said, um, knows no bounds. Uh, she doesn't ever actually have a day off, or a vacation for that matter, because I've spoken to her on both occasions. <laughs> not, that, not that any of us should be doing that, but the point is, um, she takes her job very seriously. She takes this city and the well-being of this city very seriously. And in every single one of these cases where it, she could easily send somebody else to just drop the hammer on somebody, she also leads with her heart. Um, because I've seen that also firsthand where you know we had a troubled building and Marlene said, we got to get everybody together. So all of a sudden we got like 11 different departments together to, to handle this one case. It's a very, um, I think, gently um, and thoughtfully handle helping this woman get out of her house and get into a better situation and help the entire block. Um, so she makes a difference every day. I, I thank you for this appointment. Marlene, I thank you for your commitment to this city and um, to your mother. Thank you for this gift of this amazing woman um, and uh, so appreciate everything that she's already done and will continue to do in this new role. Congratulations, Marlene. Thank you, Alderwoman. The chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we? Did we did yeah, we, I was. I was go ahead. Just go ahead. You, I, I know I was coming up so yeah, soon. That's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you are you writing a whole poem over there? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, All right. Yeah, I should. Well, been here nine years. Marlene was the, one of the very first people that I talked to, and not only has she been my commissioner, she's been like a big sister, a confidant, my therapist at times. <laughs> And I am really proud that you are finally put in this position to echo the sentiment of everybody else. This is well overdue. More than qualified, um, and we look for more and more better things from you. And, to, and we've, had, you, you, we've talked what my mom was going through, what my mom was going through, and now I see. That's, that's, that's the woman. She, she, she helped me when my mom was sick and going through some things, and the love that she had you poured over in her conversations with me. So in addition to your daughter being a phenomenal commissioner, being a phenomenal worker for us, being a phenomenal friend to me, she's just a phenomenal woman, and we owe that all to you. So thank you for sharing her with us. And Marlene, we got work to do, all right? Thank you, Mr. President. All right, I'm going to snap for that. That's all right. <laughs> all right. Chair recognizes Alderwoman Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I cannot thank you enough for finally, finally appointing such a great individual, delayed but not denied, I think is your testimony. Commissioner, you were right there when Antioch caught on fire. You were in Inglewood on 63rd and Stewart every day when our community was at a huge loss, a pillar of community. You were there to make sure that the process when effortlessly you were there of comfort for Pastor Dew and the entire Antioch uh, church family. And I know that it was the blessing of when you were in your mother's womb to care for our community. Congratulations. Thank you to our COO for ensuring that we are vetting capable, competent, and qualified candidates. Delayed, but not denied. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Alderwoman. The chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, too, stand in support of this appointment. 
uh, Marlene has always been, uh, we'll call it a Johnny on the spot, a Jane on the spot with, with, uh, with everything. Um, I, it's funny, I can recall my first time meeting Marlene and it was in an alley uh, with a building owner had called me about a back porch issue. Unbeknownst to me, the man had no back porch and uh, Marlene was very kind in, in closing his uh, property down. And uh, after, after that conversation with her, I never questioned anything that she brought to me because I always felt that she had the interest of our community and our city uh, at heart. Again, this is well-deserved, long overdue. And uh, tell your daughter next to you that we are all, in t all together here. And uh, thanking you for providing such a wonderful soul to all of us here for the city of Chicago. God bless you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alder Vasquez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, I want to commend you on this appointment. Um, I really appreciate you, Ms. Hopkins. Uh, you know, coming into to this appointment, I had questions, like uh, uh, some of our um, constituents had. And for you to come to the office and really break down, like, decision by decision, how you land on certain things, you're a real one in ways that I think we need more of when it comes to government. And so I appreciate that about you. Uh, I can't even imagine what it's like serving under the different number of administrations you served under to see what one person's wishes are and then how you deliver on that. Your ability to build relationships uh, speak to more than just the department you serve. You're building Chicago through so many different lenses that I want to thank you for that. Um, I look forward to partnering with you so we can make sure we hold some of these landlords accountable as we discussed, um, and really just really overjoyed to see you in the position. So thank you for serving. Uh, thank you for having your sister in the booth as well. Uh, and thank you so much for the appointment, Mayor. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Mitz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I too stand and support this resolution. Marlene, we've worked together for a long time. And you know what I like about you is that sort of remind me of myself where when you lay down and allow others to stand up and you wait your time, you have done that throughout the years and we're grateful for it. So you can't say what someone gave you, you've earned every dime of it. And thank God for it. Thank you for your family who's been there to support you and just know it's going to be beautiful for you because you know every in and out of the department already. You have a great staff working for you, and now you can execute those ideas where you couldn't at first, but now you had the power to do so. We're looking forward to those wonderful things that you can see to make the city a better place uh, that all of us will be able to be proud of. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you. The chair recognizes. Alderman Napolitano. Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise in support of this great appointment. Um, I'll make this very quick, well overdue. Um, in my time here, you've been in a, just a tremendous resource to our office. And just a very quick story uh, in, in the process of trying to make the city better and, and create ordinances that, that work better for our city. Uh, we've turned one over to you and said, hey, where are we right and where are we wrong with this? And you just blew me away. You were. Absolutely incredible. You said, Anthony, let's do this. Let's remove that. Let's make this better on behalf of the city. And that is the way this should all work. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, it's not crossed the finish line yet, but just for your input and for you to take the time and bring it down to uh, our level and back up to your level and just create it for the betterment of the city was awesome. And I appreciate that from you. Uh, and that's the way government should work. And great appointment, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman O'Shea. Thank you, Mr. President. I too rise in support of this appointment. Uh, I'm going to tell a little story. It was uh, November 24th, 2012, almost uh, 11 years ago. And uh, on that cold November Saturday, we had a terrible fire in my ward in the Morgan Park community. It was a five story, 32 unit complex. The fire was so intense, the fifth floor collapsed into the fourth, the fourth into the third. Uh, there were, for several hours, people unaccounted for in the building. At one point, we had a mayday call go out. Firefighter was unaccounted for. It was very scary standing there in the street, watching all this transpire. Um, 
Luckily, everybody made it out. Luckily, the fireman was found, and uh, we moved forward through the night. That building was occupied primarily by senior citizens. To be candid, black people without a lot of family to support them. There was no children driving up saying, I'm going to take mom to my place. There was no grandchildren pulling up to check and make sure that everything was okay. These people had nowhere to go. Marlene Hopkins, quarterback that day, she got the Red Cross and the Salvation Army. She got CTA buses to keep freezing cold victims warm. She got the Chicago Public Library to keep the Walker Branch tours down open. And she stayed there all afternoon into the evening. She stayed there with me. She helped me through this process. The sun had come up the next morning. Marlene Hopkins, this compassionate leader, stayed there to make sure that every single senior citizen was looked after. The beautiful thing for me was I got credit in the local paper the next week. <laughs> but that, ladies and gentlemen, that is who this individual is. I had an opportunity a few minutes ago to spend a few minutes with her mom. And to her mom, to her brothers, and to her aunt. How proud you must be. And how lucky we are. God bless you all. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks for what you do. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Curtis. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Again, you got 100. This is a great. It's a thousand, Alderman. <laughs> Adding a thousand. We're going to leave it at 100. It's not good. We got 100, not enough. That's no, not, not what you're batting. Let's do 100, Mr. President. Let's do 100. It's 100. <laughs> this was an awesome, awesome appointment. Uh, Marlene, you know, definitely uh, overdue. This is definitely your season. Everyone talking about um, her uh, building, uh, going into building, building codes, and things like that, you should see her in action. Uh, she allowed me to be her Robin, and I, she was definitely Batman, because I stood on the side. But in the middle of the night, many nights, right in our community, we shut down so many illegal uh, pop-up parties, and you should see her in action. She'll spin around with that cake and start kicking in them doors and kicking those kids out. Awesome thing. I mean, it, it, it was great. You know, leaders lead by example. And I, and I don't know, um, I'm hoping that uh, you continue uh, to come out. You continue to come out uh, and, and don't leave that up to, you know, your deputies and things like that. You know, uh, you've been great if, if uh, not only have it been pop-up parties, but you even called me many times to even do well-being checks on seniors. So I appreciate you wholeheartedly. Uh, this was a great appointment and well overdue. You came up through the ranks and you know the job and, and I appreciate that. Mayor, once again, 500, 500, 500, Mayor, 500. 500, 500. Marlene, okay, Marlene a thousand. Okay, I got it. Right. Marlene a thousand. Thank you. Great job, uh, you, Mr. Sir. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, it's good to be in the Hall of Famer. All right. Chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. I don't know how to follow that one, but that's all right. Uh, but thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, members of the City Council, and, and good afternoon, Commissioner, and to your family and guests. You know, a lot has been said about all the experiences that we've had with uh, Marlene Hopkins over the years, and I think it's truly a testament that even her old boss is here, Judy Friedland, I think is back here somewhere, well, was back here somewhere, because everyone is here as a testament to you and to what is going to happen next under your leadership. And 
I was, as I'm sitting here listening to all of these stories that many of us can recount, you know, I started thinking, Mr. President, of I've had good stories where we've been able to save lives, and I've had sad stories where we literally were in tears at what we found in the neighborhoods. So much is found in the buildings of the city of Chicago, good and bad. And Marlene and her team have been there with us through it all. I think, as we often do with our commissioners when they are appointed, our department heads, we usually tell them that this is probably the best day uh, of your tenure because it's all downhill once you start working. But for you, you will be the exception because you, Marlene, already know and have already earned and already command the respect, love, and admiration of so many in this room that this is not going to be a, a one-day honeymoon but a continuation and the propagation of everything that you've been doing here in the city of Chicago. I'd say throughout this administration's tenure, you are probably the best pick so far. Um, because we know your heart, we know your work, and we all know the value you have in our neighborhoods. Because yes, we have seen you on the streets. When you probably could have been at home with family or doing other things, you've been there. You've answered the call like all the best that have come before you, and I don't see any reason why that's going to change. And more specifically, that you are now going to continue to build and show the next generation of city uh, administrators and employees what it means to be a proud city of Chicago employee. To have the pride and love of a city and to have it resonate throughout every neighborhood is no easy feat, and yet you make it look so simple. And that's because it was ingrained in you by those who raised you. Continue, carry on, and know that from the 1st to the 50th, and especially in the 15th, you will always have a place to call home. You're always going to have work in my ward, so don't worry. Um, but know that, yes, it is a 1,000, um, but, but you are someone who, as far as many of us are concerned, are beyond reproach when it comes to your passion, compassion, and dedication fighting for what we all believe in to make this city a much better place than when we found it. So congratulations to you, congratulations to you, and thank you for all you do. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Spazzato. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, joined the choir of my colleagues with their accolades for Marlene. I just want to make a couple corrections, a couple things somebody said, one of my colleagues said, and I don't mean anything negative towards him. He said, you had an off day and you helped him with something. I've known you for 13 years. I don't think you had an off day. So every day is a Monday to you. We all appreciate you for that. I know you know you have an awesome staff. Uh, you're leading this department now. Uh, I know you'll continue to do good work. And mayor, I'm always a believer of whoever the mayor wants to support that. But every once in a while, we got a, 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 an awesome person like Marlene who came up through the ranks that's well-deserved, well-versed. And uh, we're just, um, I'm just filled with joy that she's going to be leading this department. So. Great appointment. You have my 100% support. Marlene, look forward to continue working with you. God bless you. God bless all of us. A great, great, greater for us than it is for her, that's for sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Jeanette Taylor. Thank you, Mr. President. Black girl magic. That is what we call her in 20. I, it is just, this is a day that we all could be proud of because this is a woman who doesn't pick sides and she comes with the truth. Um, I had a conversation with her about her, that the, the weapons may form, but never against her. We know she was the fall guy for the Hillco mess. We know she was, and we know she didn't play a role in that. And so I want to publicly say thank you for standing strong. Thank you for not leaving, because anybody else would have walked away. I'm glad you stayed. 
The people on 20 are blessed to have you. The citizens of Chicago are blessed to have you. I thank you, Mr. President, for this important. Thank you, Alderwoman. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. I stand in two with, in support of this appointment, and I just mirror everything that all of my colleagues have said. You know, thank you for always responding, even when you're on vacation. Thank you for always being available, having your great leadership. You come from great stock. Thank you, mom and family. Um, you know, with strong support, that's how you, you know, you rear a woman like this. Through strong, through, through strong family support, and we thank you, and I look forward to continue to work with you. And it's just so amazing to have some, just one person who navigates through all these 50 wards and know them like the back of your hand, better than we do. Know what property is here, know what's there. You don't even have to tell you. Before we can even say it, you've already been on it. And so I appreciate your hard work and dedication, and I look forward to having you around. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Talia Faro. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, rise in support of this um, appointment. Um, Mr. President, I, I think you could attest when you were uh, in your service as commissioner in the first district, um, where we, um, in our respective districts and ward, um, experienced a, a multi-unit um, explosion. Um, and Marlene came to the scene and was nothing less than professional. Uh, not only was she professional, and, and this is what I appreciate so much about you, Marlene, um, you're very compassionate. And as, as some of my colleagues have stated, um, so it, it's not just those big incidents um, like that, but even some of the smaller ones that stand out to me in particular, um, the way you came to my ward to assist um, a business that had been shut down, um, and how you um, helped and gave her instructions on how to reopen by fixing the building codes um, that she was in violation of. And, and so it's those small things and compassion about people, their business, because you understood that the more and the longer her business stayed closed, uh, that there was no money coming in for that particular family. And so you worked with them, and that is true compassion. So thank you, and Mr. President, uh, this is a great appointment, and congratulations, Marlene. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes Alderman David Moore. Thank you, um, Mr. President. First of all, Mama, I see you over there smiling. You have so much to be proud of. And without saying, you are so beautiful. Um, first of all, let me start by saying, Marlene, you know, Reverend Evans used to say, keep a good name, because your name will get somewhere before you do. And throughout the years, you've kept a good name. I know that young man, and I have to take my head off to him, that's standing behind you, our CEO, COO, John Roberson, um, some years ago had a doggone good eye. Um, his intelligence, and we were at aviation back in 98, but then him looking and knowing what a jewel you were to bring, and you are, to bring you over to the Chicago Housing Authority. And as we focused on the many endeavors of having to work on the plan for transformation and work with our residents, you didn't have a big title, but your voice carried a lot of weight throughout that housing authority and helped every development manager, every officer do what we needed to do to try to do our best to do right by our constituency. Now, as he elevated, <laughs> guess who he kept taking with him? Marlene Hopkins. Why are you taking Marlene? We need Marlene. No, I need Marlene. Going from there, going to the sewer department, going to uh, permits, all of that because they, he know he needed a superstar to take with him. And that you did. You performed in every area over and above. But you didn't stop there, Marlene. You could have been happy with the dollars you was making and all of that. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says, study to show thyself approved. 
you went back to school, you excelled in your craft, not only in um, experience, but in academics as well. But this is what touches my heart the most, and this is what I love about this appointment, Mr. President, the most. You are Chicago. You are Chicago. You love this city. But not only that, because when we see people, as I think um, Alderman Spasado um, spoke upon, coming through, there's nothing like people who has started out just serving in smaller capacities get elevated, get elevated. And that's what does my heart good. So, uh, Mr. President, I wholeheartedly stand in support of this um, appointment. And I have no doubt, no doubt, that's going to be um, a unanimous vote on this appointment. Thank you so much, and I wish you well. Love you to life. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Alderman Chico. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, rise in support of this. The Tenth Ward thanks you. I have called on you several times in the last few months, some with situations I didn't know how we are going to get out of, but you assured me we were, and we did. So on behalf of the Tenth Ward, thank you. Thank you for making me look good and helping my residents. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alderman. There are no other Alders that wish to speak besides the chair. Okay. Um, the chair recognizes Alderman Burnett, and then Alderman Lawson is standing because he's next, apparently. Alderman Burnett. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I apologize. I thought you saw my hand earlier. Um, but I would be remiss if I did not uh, say anything about Marlene. Uh, I've been knowing Marlene for a long time. I've seen Marlene sit in the background and help many, many commissioners to shine. Uh, she never goes out and get to shine. And just like everyone said, and I concur with what they said, you know, Marlene is everywhere. You know, and I'm a little jealous because I thought I was the only one that she helped like that, but it appears she's treating all of us the same. But anyway, <laughs> Marlene is everywhere, uh, you know, and she goes from the biggest job to the smallest job. And one of the things that we said at the committee, uh, that I said at the committee, you know, Marlene don't have to be here. And I just want to thank you, Marlene, and, and commend the mayor for choosing you, but, but thank you for continuing to give your civic duty to the city of Chicago. Because um, I know you can leave if you wanted to, but we appreciate you staying. The city needs you. Dealing with the cut to tape that's, that's uh, being proposed, you are the one who can implement all of those ideas in your department, and we need you to help implement it. But also, not only dealing with building challenges, you are the one who can help us bring cranes, more cranes, back to the city of Chicago. So I look forward to the future of the next three years of working with you. I commend you. Your family should uh, be very proud of you. Uh, and we want to thank you all, because I know I called Marlene. I don't know how she had time for family. Because I know I called Marlene late at night. My staff be calling her. You know, whenever building challenges come up, I don't know why, but everybody say, call Marlene, right? So I know we have taken, them, taken her from you all, so we want to thank you all for sharing Marlene with us. Congratulations to you, Marlene. Thank you, Alderman. Before we pass it back to the vice chair, for the last words here, the chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've done a lot of thinking and soul searching and this appointment since it was announced several weeks ago. You know, Marlene Hopkins has been a constant presence in my ward. She helped keep an undocumented family in their home by meeting them in person and explaining how to vacate a demolition order. She took the time and patience necessary to explain city government to a desperate family in need. Marlene most recently helped my office shut down a bar in a matter of days, a bar that had been the originating location for multiple acts of violence, including the shooting of seven people four blocks from my home. Marlene responded immediately to my request for investigation of this business, and with the work of her investigators, found multiple violations that led 
to this bar being shut down led to community safety and led to a tear in our community leaving. I and my community also remember vividly the systematic failures of city governments that led to the grossly failed implosion of a smokestack in my community. Again, only blocks from my home. And Chief, we gotta re release that report, Chief. Marlene met with community members and environmentalists in Little Village and with my colleagues to explain her role. She owned up to the role. She stepped forward to explain how she would have done things differently, being more accountable. And by stepping up, she played a role in changing this system that failed my community. This is a sign of a public official who is willing to listen, take responsibility to restore justice, and make the necessary changes in government to achieve better outcomes for our residents. And for those reasons, Mr. President, I will be a yes in this appointment today. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. The chair recognizes Vice Chair Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to invite Alderman Curtis and a Commissioner to Wrigley Field, and we will explain what batting a thousand means. <laughs> Mayor, you're welcome as well. Um, I actually spent a lot of time with Marlene at Wrigley Field. Um, <laughs> Whether that was the World Series or uh, saving that landmark, um, they're actually doing the roof uh, where they're taking the original wood roof off of Wrigley Field and replacing it bit by bit. So the work continues actually, it looks done, it's never done. And you know that, the work is never done. Um, and I joked yesterday that I've spent more time only as of this moment in this building maybe with you than in the field and in my ward. And, and that really says something about you and your commitment. I said we can meet here, we can Zoom, Nope, you're coming to my ward. And, and I, I know that you were gonna be a commissioner in that vein as well, and serve the entire city and service in the neighborhoods where we are. I really appreciate that you're open and willing to look at the code. As I said yesterday, understanding owner-occupied buildings are different than com totally commercial or investment property, and we need to lean into that. Um, so I, I appreciate your stance there. Also, as a city lifer myself, um, I appreciate your commitment and work to lift up mine and every neighborhood in this city. So best of luck to you and congratulations and congrats on this appointment. Um, therefore, I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee report and an associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. All right, hearing no objections. Sure, uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Bill. Mr. President, uh, as I've done in the past, whenever we have an exceptional appointment, I ask for a roll call vote for the purposes of seeing nothing but green on the screen. Okay. All right. Uh, a roll call vote has been requested. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right. The voting is now open. The voting is now open. Please log into your device. The voting is now open. The voting is now open. Alderman, I love how you said, see the green. See, you're embracing e voting. I will now ask for a voice vote. If you have not voted, Alderman Laspada, not present. Alderman Hopkins, not present. Alderman Dow, not present. Alderman Robinson. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Alderman Robinson is a yes. Alderwoman Taylor. Absolutely, yes. Taylor is a yes. Alderman Mosley, not in chambers. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Absolutely, yes. Alderman Irvin? Yes. Alderman Irvin is a yes. Alderman Wagaspak, not present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez, not present. Alderman Ramirez Rosa? 
Not present. Alderman Viegas. Yes. Alderman Viegas is a yes. All those that voted who wish, it is now closed. Voting is now closed. There are 42 yeas, no nays. This motion carries. Alderman Mitchell. Alderman Mitchell on the motion to reconsider. Mr. President, <laughs> motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed say no. This motion fails. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations, Commissioner. The chair recognizes Vice Chair Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, moving on, uh, document number 02024-0008401, an amendment of the Municipal Code, Chapter 17-12, by adding new section 17-12-1105 that establishes boundaries and regulations for signs within the Wrigley Field adjacent special sign district located in the 44th Ward. I will pass by this item by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. There is one historic landmark designation, document number 02024-0008226 for Apollos 2000, located at 2875 West Cermak Road in the 24th Ward. I don't believe anyone wishes to speak, so I move passage by the, of this item by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing none, so ordered. Both summaries contain various map amendments in the 3rd, 6th, 9th, 11th, 10th, 16th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 32nd, 39th, 40th, and 50th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing none, so order. Both summaries contain various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade, in the 1st, 2nd, 5th, 25th, 27th, 29th, 33rd, 35th, 41st, 44th, 45th, 47th, and 48th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing none, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. That completes all of our committee reports. Thank you all for your diligence and patience. Okay, on matters of the agreed upon calendar, Chair recognizes Chairwoman Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. I received from City Clerk 
Andrea M. Valencia, a total of 119 items proposed of for the uh, GREED calendar, consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, and tributary resolutions from the following alderperson. Alderperson Dow, Alderperson Robinson, Alderperson Hall, Alderperson Harris, Alderperson Chico, Alderperson Lopez, Alderperson Coleman, Alderperson Rodriguez, Alderperson Talaferro, Alderperson Villegas, Alderperson Mitz, Alderperson Pizzato, Alderperson Knudsen, Alderperson Gardner, Alderperson Amanda Hoppenworth, and I move these in the omnibus, Mr. President. Hearing no objections, so ordered. For new business, clerk will call the wards beginning with the 50th ward. Zoning amendments which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. An exemption from physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access for parking facilities which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. All Manhattan and others have opposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-31 by inserting a new section 2-31-045 establishing Chicago Shoreline Advisory Board to develop and update shoreline management plan which is referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection. Alderman Minaha Hoppenworth has proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as William Friedkin Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Martin has proposed ordinance for an opening of the public way on West Leland Avenue between Northwestern Avenue and North Lincoln Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Martin also has proposed ordinance for amendment of an honorary street designation as, uh, as Ozzie Goff Way to Ozzie Baldwin Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Martin and others have proposed resolution for expression of support on the passage of the Community Safety Through Stable Homes Act by the Illinois Legislature, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Alman Knudsen has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 8-4-147 prohibiting unattended substances or weapons on public way or on private property, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Alman Riley has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-8 by adding a new article 5 entitled Chicago entitled City Council Review of Departmental Rulemaking requiring transparent, clear and accessible rulemaking by city departments which is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 17-4-0404 modifying limitation on minimum lot area reductions to include buildings in lawful existence for 20 years in districts with a dash 16 designation and granted no previous floor area bonuses. It was referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Riley also has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Napolitano and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 4-17, by modifying procedures to designate restricted residential zones and allowing residents and zones to petition for repeal of designation which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Vasquez has a proposed resolution to call for hearings to explore and address implica impl impl implications of climate change-induced migration to Chicago, which is referred to the Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Alman Spizzato has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as P.O. Thor O. Soderberg CPD Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Mitz has a proposed ordinance for vacation of a portion of North Harding Avenue between Lake, Lake Street and Kinsey Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Villegas has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West Chicago Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Villegas has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-68 by adding a new article 2, establishing guidelines and procedures for implementation of artificial intelligence programs and solutions to enhance city operations, which is referred to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Almond Villegas also has a proposed ordinance for requirements for city departments and agencies to include classification for Middle Eastern or North African on data reports using racial or ethnic classifications which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. 
Alman Villegas and others have proposed the ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-68 by adding a new article 2 entitled artificial intelligence programs establishing guidelines and procedures for effective implementation of AI by city departments and the office of the city clerk, which is referred to the committee on economic, capital, and technology development. Alderman Ramirez Rosa has proposed the ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 9-64-170 by allowing parking of pickup trucks or vans less than 8,000 pounds on portion of North Elston Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Traffic and Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Alderman Wagaspak has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alderman Wagaspak also has proposed ordinance for honorary street designation as Honorary Colleen J. Flood Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Wagaspak and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code Title II by modifying chapters 2-36 and 2-84 and by striking residency requirements for continued salary payments to relatives of police and fire department officers killed in the line of duty, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Irvin has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Irvin also has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code section 2-92-015 by removing term limits for chief procurement officer, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alman Irvin also has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code section 2-53-020 by modifying term limits and causes of removal for the director of the City Council Office of Financial Analysis which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alman Irvin also has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Chapter 2-92, by adding a new section 2-92-371, establishing minimum requirement for contract bidders doing business with the City of Chicago, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Alman Irvin also has a proposed resolution to call for hearings on laws and policies prohibiting violence interrupters from working within schools based on convictions of nonviolent offenses which is referred to the Committee on Education and Child Development. Alman Burnett has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Burnett also has proposed orders for vacation and dedication of public alleys in the area bounded by West Chicago Avenue, North Central Park Avenue, West Huron Street, and North Monticello, Street, Monticello Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Tabaris has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 3944 West 55th Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Tabaris also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-244-140, prohibiting peddling in the 23rd Ward, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman O'Shea has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Winnie Ryan Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Coleman and others have proposed resolution to call for hearings on missing women in the city of Chicago, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Quinn has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Chico has proposed orders for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-023, to, allow, to disallow additional package goods licenses on portion of South Commercial Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Harris has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-023, to allow additional package goods licenses on portion of South Stony Island Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Harris also has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-023, to disallow additional package goods licenses on portion of South Stony Island Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Harris also has proposed an ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package, good, package goods licenses on portion of East 79th Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Mitchell has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code titles 5 and 13 by adding new sections 5-12-071 and by replacing in its entirety section 13-72-105 requiring landlords or condominium governing associations to maintain safety and security on prospective premises which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alman Robinson has proposed ordinance for amendment of vacation of the area bounded by East 26th Street, South Lake Park Avenue, East 31st Street, and South Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive to authorize release of utility easements benefiting Commonwealth Edison and Illinois Bell, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Robinson and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Chapter 7-28, by deleting and replacing Section 7-28-660, establishing rodent abatement czar and to, to coordinate city department efforts related to rat abatement, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. 
Alderman Robinson has a proposed ordinance for amendment of Ms. McCode, section 9-68-032, to include portion of East 31st Place, South Vernon Avenue, and East 32nd Place in seasonal permit parking program, which is referred to the Committee on Traffic and Pedestrian Safety. Alderman Robinson also has a proposed ordinance for a lease of property at 4727 through 4759 South Cottage Grove Avenue to use as contractor parking for Northwestern Memorial Healthcare, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman Lasbada has proposed ordinance for amendment of MISPA code section 4-60-025 by restricting additional late hour liquor licenses within the first ward, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alderman Lopez and others have proposed orders for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-156 regarding definition of lobbyists and further regulating restricted activities by lobbyists, which is referred to the Committee on Ethics and Governmental Oversight. Alman Lopez and others also have proposed, proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter th chapters 3-50 and 3-74, establishing tax on automated kiosk devices installed in retail stores, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Your Honor, that concludes the presentation of automatic introduction. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Approval of the journals. Alderman Mitchell for the approval. I'm not aware of any corrections to the journals from the March 20th, 2024, 2024 regular meeting or the April 1st, 2024 special meeting and move that it be approved. All right. Well, hearing no objections, so ordered for unfinished business. Alderman Mitchell. Mr. President, I am not aware of any unfinished business. Very well. Miscellaneous business. Alderman Mitchell. I'm aware of three pieces of miscellaneous business. For, for the first piece of miscellaneous business, Alderman Bill has asked to make a motion to discharge the Committee on Housing and Real Estate from further consideration of Ordinance 02023-0005850 and ask that the same ordinance be considered today by City Council. Very well, the Chair recognizes Alderman Bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, this is an application uh, that was submitted back in February of 2023 uh, that what went through the Shot Blocks Builder Program uh, and it has vetted the CDC and Plan Commission with unanimous votes uh, and so I introduced an ordinance back in November of uh, last year to get this heard um, and I know we had some hiccups with not having enough members at the Plan Commission meeting and so, um, you know, under our rules and regulations, we, you know, this body has the right to introduce an ordinance to pass uh, this ordinance uh, as we see fit. So I motioned up the Rule 41, and so I asked for the most favorable roll call on the Committee on Finance with the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. All right, so we have a motion for a discharge on the floor first. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, it's a two-step process. All right, so the motion is for the discharge for the first favorable vote. If there are no objections to that, seeing none, so ordered. All right, now, now there's a motion on the floor, the second motion. Go ahead, make your motion. The motion is also uh, to pass the ordinance uh, by the same most favorable roll call vote on the Committee of Finance and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. If there are no objections to that, that's not out of order. If there are no objections, so ordered. Thank you. All right, the chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. All right. So, Alderman Riley, Alderman Riley also filed two notices pursuant to Rule 41, but it's my understanding that he does not wish to proceed with those items at this time. Okay, the, the chair recognizes Alderman Riley. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as uh, Alderman Mitchell was about to say, um, Alderman Beal and I have come to an agreement on the Office of Legislative Council ordinances. Uh, and it's true, we did put in Rule 41 motions for the uh, substantive resolution, which actually creates the office, which is housed within Chairwoman Harris's committee, uh, and also the appropriations and budget ordinance that is housed within Chairman Irvin's committee. And after speaking with both chairs um, and having been promised uh, committee proceedings to consider both of those ordinances um, after today, um, Alderman Beal and I uh, will be withdrawing our Rule 41 motion 
Um, and again, we're very happy to report we've come to an agreement on this. This is something members of this body have been working on before this administration. Um, I think it's going to be a very powerful and useful tool for the City Council. I look forward to um, making a small adjustment that Chairwoman Harris would like to see done and to bringing uh, some of our newer colleagues up to speed on um, where this ordinance came from and where it's gotten to. Uh, but I do think um, because it ironically is all about transparency and good government, um, it made no sense to try and ram that through here today with a Rule 41 rather to air it out in the light of day in front of the public in proper committee hearings. So I'm grateful to Chairwoman Harris and to Chairman Irvin for uh, promising to make that happen and therefore we withdraw those motions. Thank you, Thank you Mr. very President. much. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Mitchell, are there any other mis miscellaneous items? Well, except for the ordinance setting the date and time of the next meeting, I'm not aware of any further miscellaneous business. Very well. Well, then let's um, go to the date and time of the next meeting. All right. I've handed up an ordinance to the clerk setting the date and time of the next meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please read that ordinance. ordinance. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Chicago, Section 1. The next regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Chicago shall be held on Friday, April 19th, 2024, beginning at 12.45 p.m. in the City Council Chamber on the second floor in City Hall, 121 North LaSalle Street, Chicago, Illinois. Section 2, this ordinance shall take effect and be in force from and after its passage. Very well. Alderman Mitchell. Hearing no objections, so ordered. For the omnibus. Alderman Mitchell. I move that matters in the omnibus be passed by the first most favorable roll call vote by the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Alderman Mitchell on a motion to adjourn. There being no further business before this body, I move that we adjourn. Hearing no objections, so ordered. This meeting is adjourned. Yeah, we got it.